President Skillman, we're on the air. <laughs> we're on the air. Two minutes ahead of our clock, but that's fine. <laughs> Uh, we are still missing our secretary, who I'm sure will be coming in, but otherwise we... Oh, and uh, Pat English, who <coughs> had a hip replacement, finally, uh, is doing well, and we wish her well. I'm sure she's watching today, uh, but she's missing also. Oh. Thank you, Mimi. I appreciate that. Okay. I'll start over again. <laughs> Good morning. <coughs> uh, we're... Missing a couple of people, we expect Maggie to be coming in soon, our secretary, but as I was saying, Pat English had a hip replacement surgery last week, a week ago, Friday, and is doing very well, but she's home and recovering, and I'm sure she's watching us this morning, so Pat, we're all thinking about you and hoping everything is well. Uh, but we do have a quorum, so we'll get started. We're going to have a little bit of a different meeting this morning. Uh, I'll go into that more with my chair's remarks, but as you can see from your agenda, there are some things on there that we don't normally have. Uh, so we'll start out. It was supposed to be Director Blackwell, but since she hasn't shown up yet, uh, <clears throat> no, no, that was Leslie. Okay, uh, if we can all stand and face the flag, I'll be glad to lead the Pledge of Allegiance today. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> Hurry, Maggie, hurry. <laughs> Please stand. You were all standing as We're standing for you. And join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, we're all here now. <laughs> so we have our order. I have called to order the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, media, I don't see Emily. She comes in a little bit late, or sometimes they're watching it on TV. Uh, so we know they're upstairs. Thank you, VTV. Uh, the <clears throat> approval of the agenda. I have one change to the agenda before we approve it, and that is on the second page under the consent calendar. If you'll notice in your agendas, we have two number ones. Just a clerical uh, Scribner's error, which uh, we will correct before we put the minutes in uh, official. And Excuse me, what do you know? I have a bunch of other changes besides Okay, that for the agenda or for the, the agenda. minutes? Yeah, just corrections. Okay, yeah. very Can good. Deal? Yes, please. Um, Is your mic on? On page three of five. Put off. No, pull the microphone down. Pull the microphone down. Thank you. There you Thank go. You. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, on page three, mm -hmm. uh, item 14D. I think it would clear, be clearer if that said entertain a motion to endorse a motion to adopt revision rather than entertain a motion to entertain a motion. And back in the uh, detail, it, it kind of talks about endorsing. All right. You see so, a 14D? Right. We only need to entertain a motion once. Okay. Then uh, 15A, uh, that date there should be 2018. Very good, thank you. Okay, uh, then uh, back on uh, one of the exhibits, uh, this is page 22 of 22, agenda item number 12A. This is That's the, not in the... This is the, uh, in the attachments. Agenda item 12A, page 22 of 22. Can, can we cover that under minutes? Yeah, yeah. The, the, That's uh, not the agenda. Right. That's what what we if get. I have corrections to the exhibits? Yeah, but that's still not part of the agenda that we're adopting for today's okay. meeting. All right. <clears throat> Any other corrections? That's it. Though. That's it. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Very good. Well, it's always great to have two or three pairs of eyes. I know we look at it, but sometimes things just kind of go, Foomp. so that's great. Thank you for your, your comments. 
Um, I'll entertain. I have a question. I have a question here. Yes. Um, agenda item 16. E. Next meeting, February 5, 4. What does yes. that mean? I'm sorry, it is February 5th. Yeah, February 5th, the four yes. is the extra one. Okay. Okay, thank you, good catch. Janie? Under 12, <laughs> we're all bad here. <laughs> Under 12A, we do not have an item six. We have item five and item seven. Right, that's because we had two ones. So yeah. when you change oh, the numbering on that, we get a six. My brain didn't go down that far. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we, we just adjust the numbers there so that it does go to six. <clears throat> okay, I'm still looking for a motion to approve the agenda. I move that the agenda be approved. Thank you, Manuel. And is this our second? One second. All right. I guess we're, we're voting by hand raising, correct? Yeah. So all those in favor? It's unanimous. All right. All right, the meeting minutes for our November 14th meeting. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? I have some. Mm -hmm. These are just uh, corrections, spelling Scribner's corrections. Errors. Okay. On page 2 of 24, on number 4, on number 4, on the very next to the last line, should have been reasonably L-Y foreseen. Okay. In the first uh, paragraph. Yes, right. right. Reasonably. And okay. in paragraph 7, the last line of the first paragraph, best team costume went, W-E-N-T. Then on page 23 of 24, number 17, the first dot. It is the National Inventors Foundation. It says investors. Yes. It's a different thing. Okay. Thank uh, you. Is that That's all? All, all right. Uh, <clears throat> Emmanuel, we, you had one on page 22. Uh, yes. Sorry, sorry. Okay, on page 22 of 22, agenda item 12A, the very top of it should have a heading saying resolution of 01-17-3Xs, and then below it should say denial of appeal, just like all, right. all the other ones have. <clears throat> That's not in the minutes, is it? 22 no, of no, 24? No, no, not the minutes. This is oh, okay, exhibit. I'm sorry, okay, I'm sorry. Because I was looking at 22 of 24, and there's okay. nothing no, like is, that in this there. This is exhibits. Yeah, okay. we'll get there when we get to the exhibits. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other additions, corrections to the minutes? Yes, Andre. Um, page 23 of 24, director's comments. A second one, Director Tong commented that he is here for the residents. If members have a problem, they should call resident services first, not just all. Missing a C there Missing makes a, a total different meaning. Attend the committee second, or then uh, call Director Tong if the problem still is not resolved. Okay. So just change it. Add, add a, a C, C there. there. Yeah. Right. Oh, yes. Very good. Anything else? That's right. I have that too. All right. I'll move for approval of the minutes, if there's nothing else. <clears throat> Second. All right, it's been moved by Steve, <clears throat> by Director Leonard. I'm trying to get formal on this. And seconded by Director Blackwell. Uh, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Okay, <clears throat> report of the chair. First of all, I'd like to wish all of our residents happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, 
uh, joyous Kwanzaa, or as they used to say on the Seinfeld show, best is for the rest of us. Uh, <clears throat> we have a little bit different meeting today. We have three of our directors who are coming in to give reports. Uh, we are, our board members are not directors on VMS. We are members of VMS, and those of that, us that attend the VMS meetings, which are closed to the general public but open to the members, which is the directors of the other boards, learn a lot <clears throat> because every meeting has a, a report from one of the directors, and I just felt that some of that information should be passed along to our residents because it was very, very eye-opening for those of us who attended the meeting. So we have three directors who are going to be giving reports today, and we've spaced them out in different places <clears throat> in the agenda so that they're not all, all grouped in one. Uh, <clears throat> the first one, and I'm very pleased to introduce, uh, Chris Barr, who is our Director of Resident Services, and is going to give us an update on what Resident Services is doing right now. Thank you. Good morning and happy holidays to all of you, to our board members and also to, uh, to President Juanita Skill Skillman. Thank you for having me here today and to all of our residents who are here today as well. Today I'm going to touch on what is, is actually happening or occurring in resident services. Um, for those of you who may not know, uh, resident services uh, has 32 employees. We handle the concierge desk, the broadband or the cable, we have the business center, the welcome center, which is the ID and permits, the call center, sales and leasing, and also trusts. So as you can see, we're pretty comprehensive. We, a uh, resident, when they come on board, touches us and those who have any questions or need additional services, also has an opportunity to actually interface with us during the course of our business day. One of the um, key factors that is, um, is very important to us in resident services and throughout our organization is improved communications. Um, we have established monthly meetings with those key departments, meaning general services, maintenance, landscaping, plumbing, security, alterations, moisture intrusion. And we're having committee meetings in order for us to uh, take a look at how can we provide better services to each other, therefore providing better services to our resident? We understand that we have to have a total focus of customer service focus in order for us to be successful and for residents to be able to be receive the services that, that actually you know, they are, um, that are important to all of you. Um, <clears throat> this particular year, we've picked up over 120,000 calls in the call center, which were ticket-oriented, in almost 100,000 gate clearance calls. What's been significant about the services that we've actually been providing is, is that we are picking up more calls, which means our residents do not have to hang up and call back again because we're not there to answer. And so we have actually improved our services. 81% um, of our calls are now being answered in 20 seconds or less. We hope to get that up to 90% uh, in the next six months. <clears throat> With the improved communications means that we're taking a look at our processes. The reason why we're meeting is, is to see what's working and what isn't working. Um, when, through that particular process, we've been able to improve and streamline the processes that have been currently in place. One of the key elements of, the, um, of us analyzing exactly how we're doing is our service order tickets. And as you can see on our dashboard, um, there's, there's a top three um, maintenance call reasons as to um, what, our, what our major calls are. And that is plumbing, landscaping, and also pest control. And looking at the 10 top reasons, it doesn't make any difference if you're in United and Third. The 10 top reasons, interesting enough, is the same. And the top three are the same as well. Um, the, um, 
the United tickets uh, came out to 9,560 tickets from September through November, because we started this process in September. It's a pilot, and it's also uh, the way that we want to start reporting acts to actually as to what are our, our service levels, what tickets are outstanding, and how we're going to work those tickets, what problems are within the tickets that we can identify to know what our priorities should actually be. The, um, in looking at uh, the, um, the graph that's in front of you, you can see that from um, September through November, we, picked, we took uh, calls, but of those calls, there was 18,800 tickets that were processed in those three months. And again, um, the plumbing, landscaping, and pest control were the highest. We had appliances, carpentry, paint, electrical, landscaping, paving, pest control, plumbing, building maintenance, and also waste management, which happened to be our top 10. Um, and so we'll be reporting to our boards exactly how many tickets were actually processed, what were they, what were our major trouble areas that we can see, and also what included in that is an aging report. So we can see what is current to what is still pending uh, over 91 to 120 days. So we're very excited about that. In January, we'll be starting a, a brand new um, set of information for all of you. So this way, we can actually identify where, we are, where our priorities actually should be set and where we're going to work on next. The next um, part of uh, resident services goal is to make certain that our agents have the kind of skills and area of expertise expertise as business professionals in order to do the job. We, our plan is to certify our customer service agents to be the staff that will meet the expectations of each and every one of our residents. Through that process, every other week, we have had a facilitated training on how to handle different types of situations in order for our customer service professionals to be able to glean from that and provide the services that, are, that we really feel are going to benefit our entire community. Um, customer service says, and just in also with our residents, it also begins with internal customer service as well, and understanding who our internal and our external customers are, and that's because in, unless we're serving each other, it's very difficult to serve all of you. So far, we've had 11 hours of training, it's every other week, one hour, and if you equate to how many employees are actually in those training, we've given over 400 hours of training, uh, 11 hours for each employee. We also have other divisions that are coming in uh, that have that hands-on, one-on-one training with the, um, with the uh, residents. We are headed towards a one-call, does-it-all city. And that means to us, instead of having 50 numbers to call in order to be served, what you'll have is just one number. And so next year, that's going to be our major focus. And that would be to consolidate numbers that we have today into one number and to be able to have agents that can answer all of your concerns and all of your service requirements. Um, we're very excited about doing that. Our bigger cities are doing that. Um, and it really is an ex they have they are an excellent role model of what we actually want our city to look like and how we're going to actually uh, be there for all of you. One call to call security, maintenance, transportation, or any of the residential requests that you have, we'll have that skilled agent at the other end of the phone, as well as the software that's required in order for us to have that, that interface and those overlays with all of our departments to be able to give you real-time information as exactly as to what's happening and how we're, um, and how where are we at with your ticket and providing your service. So that's really pretty exciting for all of us, and we're going moving that direction now. Um, that pretty much concludes my snapshot or my dashboard. Are there any questions at all? <coughs> Andre? <coughs> uh, Director Chris, 
Director Chris, I really commend you to provide this dashboard. This gives us an excellent communication tool to the residents that uh, we are serving them, and uh, this is how much we've served and helping out. <clears throat> and uh, uh, and I liked, really like the idea of expertise and the business professionals in your uh, department, and thank you very much for uh, providing them the uh, training and help us make them you know, serve our community very well. And the idea of one quarter at all is really a really critical concept that can help us simplify the residents uh, 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 request and make this community a much better place I commend you really uh, doing the best you can to help our community make our residents life uh, better here thank you very much well, thank you thank you I have a question about uh, we had a washer dryer at our cul-de-sac, so I called in. Mm -hmm. Now, on this chart, because the washer dryer has to be moved by our staff, apparently, who then moves it somewhere or contacts waste management, does it go under waste management? It would go under appliances. Uh, no, no, no. These were washer dryers left in the... Uh, Yes, Trash I guess bin. it would yeah. go yeah. to waste management. We, we also, um, just so you know, even though it's it's not our job for waste management, if somebody wants a uh, in-home uh, bulky item pickup, we coordinate that through Chris's office That's as well great. because the, mm -hmm. the call center at waste management doesn't function as well as ours does, and we just don't want to torture our residents with that. So we handle those calls mm -hmm. and make the arrangement for them. Right, and that's one area where we would like more yes. calls. Yes, we would, we would encourage residents, uh, don't, please don't put things out, out by the dumpsters. Uh, call resident services, we'll arrange for someone to come right into your manor and haul that out for you. So please, please call us. Thank you, Maggie, that's an excellent point. Yeah. But, but again, with everything that we do, <clears throat> we depend on all of you out there to be our eyes and ears. And if by your uh, trash bins you see things that shouldn't be there, you need to give Chris's group a call. Call mm -hmm. resident services uh, rather than just let them be. Mm -hmm. uh, coming up next Saturday will be the Baltic Adam pickup that uh, the city does every third Saturday. Mm -hmm. So uh, that might be helpful too. But I would like to echo <clears throat> what uh, Andre said. Uh, how great this is uh, and how needing this has been in the past. One of the things that impressed me most when I heard this at VMS is the coordination with all of the other departments, these monthly meetings, et cetera. That's something that's been sadly lacking, the right hand not doing what the left hand is doing. Mm -hmm. And by doing this, there's a much better communication within uh, VMS and all of our employees, which then again helps us to serve our members better. And I have to thank uh, certain board members, uh, Andre, Manuel, Gary, who have asked for some of these facts and figures. And uh, starting in September, we've been putting them together. Mm -hmm. And we now have a much better idea than we're doing better. It's more, whatever. Yes, we are. Now we can document what it is, and I really commend you all for that. Well, thank you so very much. Thank you for being here today. I appreciate it. Okay. Okay. One, one, one more? One more question. Let's not make it too tough, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> no, this already, you mentioned it already, and I really like uh, like the idea. You mentioned the 81% answered under 22 seconds. I would think that will be a great chart on the uh, uh, dashboard that shows that how much we've uh, responded uh, mm -hmm. and uh, in the future, you know, how, what kind of progressive we, mm -hmm. you talk about progressive 90%, which is really significant uh, amount of uh, uh, requests answered within such a short time. So if we can share that kind of information with us, that would be fantastic for the resident to know that we are really responsive, we are helping out and uh, mm -hmm. making those things, making their life better here. That's Thank a you very good much. point. And just to add to that, uh, we will, I will be doing a year end mm -hmm. report, which will include all that to include the updates so that we have a good starting point and that we know where, how we're heading uh, down the right road for the new year. So right. that would be the plan, exactly. Yes, John? Yeah, first of all, thank you very much for your report. Very thorough. 
Very Dr. helpful. Trump. Well, thank you. Uh, on this report you handed out on the dashboard, is this for the whole community or, j or just United? It, that's for the whole community. Thank you. That's United, Third, and Facilities. Okay. Janie? Chris, I wanted to commend you for being here for such a short time and such a wonderful job you've done in your department. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It takes a, it takes a team. <laughs> and we have some fantastic employees, and so I've really thoroughly enjoyed working with everyone. Most importantly, we're all on the same page. Yeah. We all want to move forward, and we all want to give very, really, really great service. And I'm But very I think the big thing our that. residents need to know is this is a process. Mm -hmm. It's step at a time, and we can't just turn around and the next day have all of this done. So the fact, what you have done in the short time that you have been here, and certainly what we have seen since September, uh, is very, very encouraging. And we know next year is going to be even better. Thank so you. thank you again, and thank you for coming this morning and filling our residents in on what's <laughs> happening in resident services. Thank you again. Happy holidays. Okay. Last but not least, in my report from the chair, I'd like all of you to know that we <clears throat> have started again. They were done at one time, but then they kind of fell off. We are now having president's meetings, executive meetings, once a month with the president and vice president of each of the mutuals. And that includes the Towers and Third and United. And uh, it's an informal meeting, it is a closed meeting, and it's a discussion. It's not a, a structured meeting. It's where we get together to say, what are you doing about this? What are we doing about this? How have we addressed this problem? What is the common problem that we need to take to VMS? What is the vehicle? But this discussion opens communications for the whole village between all of our mutuals. And I feel it's very, very productive. So I just wanted to let you all know that that is happening. We now will, <coughs> sorry, Gary. Just to add to that, the uh, treasures, oh, yeah. uh, third GRF and United are also going to meet. Uh, we're still trying to decide whether every month or every other month, but we're also going to be entering into that same procedure. Mm -hmm. Well, communication has been number one on everybody's list of what needs to be done. And we are really working on that in many, many different areas. But we felt that communication between the different mutuals, treasurers, presidents and vice presidents, whatever, was a good start in that direction and uh, uh, really helps us to work as a community. Next, we go to uh, <clears throat> number seven, which is our Appointment of a VMS board member for a three-year term. And we have four candidates. Our candidate A on your uh, agenda uh, has dropped out. So uh, <clears throat> we're going to ask each of them to give a little introduction of who they are. Uh, and then we will have a secret ballot vote just from the board to appoint <coughs> our uh, candidate, our representative to the VMS board. We have three, and they're on rotating three-year terms. So one always comes up every year for another three-year term. And we, uh, we really depend on them to be our liaison to VMS. So it's an important position. OK, uh, the first one up is Barbara Bahan. Bainan. I'm sorry, I thought I got that right. <clears throat> Would you come up and tell us who you are and what's about you? Well, I filled out a resume and... Uh, well, we saw it, but everybody else uh, did. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, We're on okay. TV. All right, fine. Uh, my name is Barbara Benun. I've Benun. lived in the village about 15 years. I live at 29H Kaya Aragon. Um, I was thrilled to move into this village because the place I located was so close to everything. Uh, I'm very active in my church, uh, which is St. Nicholas. I'm a lector. I teach a sixth grade catechism class. I'm coffee hostess for the Council of Catholic Women. And I also work on the St. Vincent de Paul Society. Uh, in the village, I'm active in the ukulele club, although I do not play very well because I have arthritis in my fingers. <laughs> but I do enjoy the singing and the camaraderie. And I'm also the... Um, treasurer of the Laguna Woods Dog Club. 
And we're very active in that we provide a licensing service to the village. And we have a very important dog show in June every year that we have about 200 people coming to uh, see. And then we have our, uh, our Christmas party, which I am decked out for right now. Uh, in my past, I have worked in every um, area as possible. Um, I think I've worked for 60 years or maybe even more. Starting out, uh, I've had a top secret clearance with the government when I worked for the Atomic Energy Commission in St. Louis. Um, I have worked for doctors. I've worked um, various other jobs, but in the last 28 years of my life, I worked for a CPA. So I am familiar with uh, accounting and things like that. I also have a part interest in two buildings, 8%, but in, uh, and I keep the accounting for that. Uh, as far as anything else, um, I think everybody has told me I'm a people person. Uh, I have uh, been ushering for over 25 years at the Performing Arts in Costa Mesa. I also usher at Laguna Playhouse and at Soco University. Uh, I enjoy that very much, and it is my cultural retirement fund because I don't have to pay to see all the wonderful programs. I just have to stand. So um, my health is good, and I am durable because I can stand for five hours when there is a performance. If there's any other questions you'd like to ask, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, board, do you have any questions? Andre? <clears throat> May I ask a question, uh, a general question to all the uh, candidates? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you want to accomplish as a VMS board director? When a problem comes up, uh, I think I have a very um, background that I can analyze and respond. As far as what I want to accomplish is what needs to be done. I have no idea what uh, needs to be done. I mean, I can tell you what needs to be done in my area, in my, in my unit right now. Uh, but other than that, I, I don't really understand the question. I'm not here to change the world or anything. I'm here to help. As we say in the St. Vincent de Paul Society, we give you a hand, not a free ride. Thank you, Barbara. Are there any other questions from the board? <clears throat> Thank you for being okay. here, and we thank you for your candidacy. And I'd like to say to all the candidates, we can only pick one of you today. But that doesn't mean that anybody loses. And we encourage you, if you are not selected today, to remember that we have many opportunities within the village to serve, either as a uh, member advisor on one of our committees. We're always looking for people to run every fall because we have anywhere from three to four openings on our board and we need people to do interest there. So if you don't uh, get this position, please don't be discouraged and apply for something else. Our second candidate <clears throat> is Alan Dickinson. And I don't think Alan is with us today. All right, we'll go to the third candidate, Sue Margolis. Good morning, I'm Sue Margolis, 34C. And when I saw the opening here, I jumped on it because I felt like I had a lot to offer to do this job. I have worked in many, many areas, but one of the areas I worked in was quality. And I worked on the initiative for ISO 9000 for a company for 30,000 employees and brought ISO 9000 into the uh, workplace. And we were the, one of the first people to get it in less than one year. So I understand quality. I understand how to implement goals, measure. I have a mathematical degree, so I understand statistics and numbers, and I'm quite willing to put forward and assist in this area. I'm very much interested in, I've lived here 15 years. I've seen lots of transitions, and I think this has been one of the better ones, and I'm hoping to make it even better by working with this group. Um, I think that we have a communication problem. We are not getting enough information to the people so they understand. They had expectations that were unrealistic with the changeover, and we need to make sure that they understand what the differences are now and that we are making progress forward 
in making the transition from associate to our own management. I feel that managing our own managers is an important thing. I've done a lot of contracts for over millions of dollars, and we need to look into that area. I see a lot of tasks being having to be redone, inefficiencies that I've seen, and I think I can assist in with corrective action in, er, in that area. And I have worked in marketing, customer service, manufacturing, quality, and mainly in engineering of new products. So I have an extensive view of how things are, can be done, and I've been a manager since 1972. I've had groups as large as 3,000 and as small as seven. So I've been through all of the areas. Um, I would like to move forward with this in this area. Any questions? Thank you. Andre, do you want to give the same question? Yes, uh, and the same question is. OK, uh, I could answer that. Yeah. I really think that I would look at the quality of service and be able to, I understand they set goals, and I can be measure how we're meeting our goals and what our goals are. I've set many goals, and I understand the need for them. OK, thank you. Any other board members have questions for Sue? Yes, Reza. What was your involvement on contracts? Can you explain a little? Yes, I bought multi-million computers, and uh, I signed contracts to sell products to other people. And I have bought all kinds of things. So I've spent probably $20 million on computers, one computer, and things like that, which did extensive work to make sure that we got the correct specifications and so forth. So I understand how important specifications are and what's necessary to do that. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much, Sue. <clears throat> and our final candidate is Dick Rader. Good morning. Happy holidays to everybody. I've lived in the village for four years, and uh, I was very... Uh, privileged to be asked by the board to take up an interim position on the BMS board, and I'd like to continue in that capacity. Uh, my goals are to uh, ensure that we're addressing infrastructure issues aggressively, that we uh, facilitate the communications between the, our fellow residents, the boards, and management, and um, we also have a handyman service I want to see implemented as soon as possible. Um, I have a PhD in microbiology. I taught at Wayne State University Medical School in Detroit, and then I formed a medical distribution company, which was involved with high-tech medical equipment and devices. And as such, I interacted with upper management, CEOs, chief financial officers, purchasing, IT, physicians, nurses, department heads, you name it. I was involved, of course, with uh, producing uh, contracts, so I'm very familiar with that, marketing and sales. Um, the most uh, uh, important thing, I think, that uh, I have to offer, besides the fact of my business experience, is the fact that uh, when I first came here, I, had t I started to attend most of the meetings of United and GRF. And I found that to be very important because it gave me the background and continues to give me the background to understand the issues that, uh, and concerns that United faces. And I think that it makes me a more effective voice uh, for United on the VMS board. So while we made great strides in improving our management services, the quest to increase more efficiencies and economies should never end. And it would be a great privilege to be able to continue to be part of this success as your representative on the VMS board. Thank you. Okay. Andre? Do you remember my question? Oh, sure. <laughs> what I, uh, I, what I, do you I, want to accomplish as a <coughs> VMS board uh, director? Well, as I mentioned, I'm interested in the handyman services, getting that going, 
the facilitation of the communications and um, making sure that we continue to uh, have more um, uh, uh, efficient operations in a cost-conscious manner. Th those are among some of my concerns and issues. Thank you, Dick. Thank you. All right. Uh, <clears throat> you all have a ballot. If you would uh, mark your choice, fold it in half, and Leslie is going to collect them for us. Question. Yes. Uh, just, for just for clarification, did we notify every candidate they need to uh, show up uh, for their presentation? Yes. So we indeed, uh, <coughs> so <coughs> Alan Dale Dickinson is uh, voluntarily give up. Uh, I can uh, answer that question. Yes, Cheryl. Um, I called them and reminded them and sent them emails about being here today. Okay. To all, right, all of the you. candidates. Thank you very much. I assume that you've done that, but I just want to clarify to the audience that uh, uh, it's their volunteer to uh, not showing up. Madam Secretary, do you have the votes? Uh, yes, we have Sue Margolis with two, Dick Rader with eight. That's correct. So Dick Rader is <coughs> reappointed for a three year term on DMS to represent United. Okay. <coughs> Thank you for your service, Dick. All right, the next thing on our agenda, number eight, the update from VMS. Uh, I know that uh, Director Libertori is not here. Uh, I, he's, he's not, is he? Where are you? Oh, you're back in the corner there, Tony. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> would you please come forward and give us our report from VMS? While he's coming, I'll just mention that we have three representatives on VMS. Uh, Director Libertori was one of our originals, and we also have Mary Stone and now Dick Rader. So, Madam President and board, <coughs> it's a pleasure to be here today for you. And uh, we've got a lot of detail here today, so I'm going to depart. From, I usually like to go with the uh, with the strategic plan, but. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is review, uh, review VMS in light of the three corporations. So November is the end of the board's tenure. And we, in December now, we start another year. And we will be uh, electing a new director and vice director. We don't have a president. Uh, we have a director and a second direct, first director or a vice director. And, um, we are, as you know, again, we'll re uh, recap. We are incorporated. There are articles of incorporation that were drawn up by the three, by the uh, boards. And uh, it's a very, it's only one or two pages, but that's where we got started. And the way they incorporated us is that we are outside the purview of David Sterling. 
and that's just informational purposes. Um, we have bylaws. The bylaws were drawn up by the three presidents of the then act three corporations. And you may remember who they are. I don't think it's relevant for me to go over that again. But they're the ones that drew up our bylaws. And additionally, with the help of a lawyer, three corporations have given the VMS board uh, management agreements, which I believe United is reviewing now. And the, the, these management agreements outline and mandate the duties of the board. And our main duty is oversight. Uh, that's our duty. We, uh, that's the way it's outlined in our management agreements and also in the bylaws. Uh, and these euphemistic, these bylaws or agreements are euphemistically called, uh, are referred to as deliverables. And deliverable uh, is a product or service. So we, the board, in oversight capacity, work with the VMS staff to make available to all residents through their corporations. Uh, the strategic stand, a uh, strategic plan, uh, after the transition and the management agreements with these outlining deliverables, the staff uh, drew up what we call the strategic plan. And then when I come before you, I use that strategic plan because it's something that we can all read. Uh, we can see where we're at, where we're going, what has to be changed. Our meetings in the first year were organizational in nature. We met every week. Someone told us it would be every quarter. It was every week, but it was organizational. And working with staff uh, to get things uh, off to a good, smooth start. The past year, we have focused on department heads and how they are doing and managing and directing their ambitious endeavor. And thanks to the uh, dedication of you, the board of directors, you have been in most of our meetings where directors, department has come up and explained to us what they're doing, what they want to do, what their problems are, and how they're attacking them. And I want to thank the board for giving us so much of your time. We do appreciate it. You know, I, I belong to one or two clubs. And, I had heard that we had, the VMS had secret meetings, <laughs> you know, and they're not secret, but as Juanita pointed out, they're open to members, and the members are third, GRF, and United, and we're not meeting in secret. <laughs> we're just following our rules. Um, the org we have an organization chart, uh, and I, we've passed these out, but in case you haven't seen it, Let's see if I can find it here with my papers. This is an organization chart that's been developed by Brett. And we have, excluding uh, the office of CEO, there are eight departments. And each has a head. And we have the VMS board in oversight capacity have had each one of these department heads at some time during the year come to us and explain to us where they're at what they're doing, and what their, what their goals are for the future. So we have the Department of uh, Department of General Services. I had a typo here. I had to read it. Department of Residential Ser Resident Services, Department of Information Services, Department of Financial Services, Department of Security Services, Department of Recreation Services, Department of Human Resources and Services, Department of Maintenance and Construction. And this comes from the maestro, Brad. So all of this, and if you are familiar with our department heads, it's done an outstanding job. And we're proud, the VMS board, uh, we're really proud to work with him and his staff. And, uh, there's not much more I can say, but you see what's going on. You see the production. And I, all I can say is that we, uh, staff and board, are poised for another productive year, 2018. 
And that's the extent of my report, Madam President. <clears throat> Thank you, Anthony. <clears throat> We are very proud of our three liaisons on the, on the board and feel that they do a really good job for us. I'm proud of my board because at the VMS meetings, we usually have now? about half of our board there to uh, attend the meetings. The other mutuals don't. <laughs> so I'm very proud that, that they take the time and effort to keep up on what's going on and really appreciate that. Okay, our next uh, <clears throat> item on number nine is our CEO report. Thank you, uh, Madam President, members of the board, members of the United Community. It's always a pleasure to uh, address you and talk about things that are, that are happening in the community. Before I begin my report today, I thought we would have Chief Moy kind of give us an update on uh, the activities of Friday afternoon and this weekend where uh, a contractor uh, hit a sort of unmarked, unidentified uh, power conduit and knocked out power to a couple of clubhouses, our maintenance facility, broadband, uh, and about 1,544 residential uh, units. And so in response to that, uh, and, of course, these things always happen late Friday afternoon or on a weekend. I guess it's better fr late Friday afternoon than a weekend. And so uh, I appointed a, a, an incident management team uh, led by a, a Chief Moy with Ernesto and Bruce and Lori, and they uh, uh, fiddled, I guess, with this all weekend on and off as uh, the elements changed and there was, you know, partial fixes and the generators started and then failed, and so we learned a lot. I've got a pretty good incident report here with about 15 action items for follow-up based on on uh, what we learned through this incident. So Tim will go into to that, and I thank you, Chief, for being here. Thank you, Brad. Uh, good morning, Chair Skillman, board members. Uh, it's good to be here today. Not exactly the way we want to start the weekend, um, but uh, we had the proper personnel to address uh, the issues. And as, as Brad uh, mentioned, we did. We had a power uh, outage. It was a result of uh, we had a, a contracted construction crew finishing up a storm drain out at the, uh, the con construction lot right next to RV lot B. And they hit this unmarked power line, and that created all sorts of problems. You had some black smoke. and. And thankfully, we had our maintenance team was, was right on the spot. We had security out there. We called the Orange County Fire Authority. We made proper notifications. We've got, uh, we uh, were able to notify Edison to get them out there as quickly as possible. But with, uh, with hitting a large power line like that, you know, power did go down for a short time at broadband, at security, uh, transportation, the clubhouses. And um, thankfully, we had some backup generators uh, which is uh, so important for us here in, in this community, this small city that, that we, we, uh, we operate. Um, so we did have the backup uh, operate for security and for broadband. Um, part of that is we need to make sure that those things are properly fueled, it's ready to go, it can carry on through the weekend in the event we had to um, uh, work off of backup generators. Things were running pretty smooth uh, with that. Again, uh, Brad did put uh, together an incident management team, so you had all the, the directors working on it. It was myself um, representing security, emergency management. Uh, you had Ernesto, and that's kind of his wheelhouse. Ernesto and, and Bruce Hartley from General Services, those are the engineers. They, they understand all that technical stuff. Uh, so we, we had them on top of it, making sure the proper notifications, personnel, and um, staff was out there addressing these issues. Unfortunately, about 8 p.m., our backup uh, generator went down at uh, Broadband. Now, Broadband is, is basically the hub for us. That's, that's our communication link. The next thing, when, when Broadband goes down, it seems like everything goes down. And we, we did learn some things here. When, when the Broadband uh, power went out and then their backup battery is only good for about an hour, that then shut down some... Um, uh, services, including security dispatch. And so you know, I just want to tell everyone who, who may be watching, if something does occur and, and you can't get a hold of dispatch and it is an emergency, um, dial 911 if it, it rises to that level. Um, you know, security di dispatch provides a, a good service here, but when it comes to something that is uh, 
uh, a medical emergency or along those lines, we want the sheriff to come out or Orange County Fire Authority. Uh, we worked with Edison. I think Ernesto Munoz did a great job, <coughs> maintained uh, constant communication with Edison. Uh, we needed it, them to have their backup generator uh, out on the scene. They were able to get that out to us uh, right around 945, and we were able to make that switch over with them. And that was just a matter of yeah. uh, uh, having IT come out and uh, do their part to make sure services were back up and running. So I don't know if I mentioned Chuck Holland, uh, but he was part of that incident management team. And so you had all these different experts dealing with the problem, getting things back up uh, to work as, as quickly as possible. Uh, with Edison out, with our uh, backup generator, their backup generator working, we then moved into Sunday. Uh, we had a few more conference calls, and we were, we were finally able to use our technicians to get our generator up. Um, put everything back up to place to pull the um, the backup generator from um, uh, Edison off, and and we're up and running. Brad mentioned there were some some action items. We yeah we do we have about 15 of them uh, from how we notify um, our community through a through a code red, putting backup systems in play over at dispatch, knowing that incoming calls are going to uh, are going to increase, having additional personnel at at resident services, adding mechanics and generator uh, uh, after hours contact list, making sure that there's an inventory, troubleshooting, transportation. Transportation is a key because if the uh, if the uh, fuel lines go down um, and we're running around, uh, we need to make sure that uh, we're able to provide for our vehicles. Now, granted, we always have the gas stations, what have you, but why not use the resources that that we have um, uh, at our disposal? So the, the, we're looking at a few things. Uh, as it pertains to emergency management as well. Now the question may come up, hey, is this a, uh, is this a time to activate our emergency operations plan? Well, y you know, yes and no. Uh, we, we did a piece of that with the emergency management team. That's an, that is a NIMS, National Incident Management System, ICS, Incident Command uh, System uh, piece as well. So we had the personnel on, on scene to be able to address this issue. It's going to take some time, but we were able to work through that. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the incident command system and our disaster preparedness plan, it's really not a disaster preparedness plan as much as it, it is an emergency operations plan. So it's not just for earthquakes. It, it can be for uh, fires. It could be for uh, long-term power outages. It could be for uh, uh, rain issues or flooding, what have you. So that. That incident command system that we have in place here and that the emergency operations plan is something that we will be able to work with moving forward regardless of, of the emergency. And I believe we'll be posting that um, on our website here, uh, yeah. I hope, within the next week. Yeah. Um, with that, I'm, I'm open for questions uh, that I may be able to answer. Okay, John. Yeah, uh, I think you guys did a Great job, you and Chuck and Ernest and all those. Uh, Lori kept us up to date through email. <clears throat> I'm curious, so why did we have an unmarked power line that no one knew was there? Right, and that's uh, that was on Edison. Edison took full responsibility and accountability for that. Um, that is something that should have been marked. They're responsible for that. That was their unmarked line. Um, I, I really, uh, we don't have an explanation. I don't think they did. It's an error on their part. I do have to say, and you know, we at times are critical of Edison, um, all of us probably. Um, but in this particular case, uh, they responded uh, very quickly and appropriately. They they dispatched and provided every piece of equipment we needed, right. and and they were really going after it the whole weekend. Uh, they, correct, Brad. They did. They took full responsibility. They they mm -hmm. saw it right there. Mm -hmm. This is an Edison line. It's unmarked. It's our problem. We're going to do whatever we can to get you back up, up to uh, uh, service. And they did. Um, I can tell you, with speaking with Ernesto on several occasions over the weekend, everything that we asked of them, they delivered for us. Arisa, you Are we making sure that uh, Southern California Edison identifies all unmarked lines now for the future? <coughs> we should. If we are. Well, if they don't know where they're at, and we don't know where they're at, we don't know until they head, but for the right, most part, yes. Correct. Okay, Ray, so you have questions? Oh, okay, very good. 
Uh, Andre, you had a question? Sorry, I, I didn't realize that we have this issue, uh, this kind of issue in the industry. There's usually a best practice standard operating procedure to have uh, periodic, like once a year, uh, UPS uh, testing, uninterrupted power supply uh, testing. Uh, so make sure, and at that time, all the uh, electricity will be shut off and to initiate, some uh, electricity will be shut off to initiate the, this kind of uh, uh, testing. Uh, I would assume it seems like we have a plan, but it's not complete. And of course, it will never be complete until we hit that problem. So I commend that. It uh, seems like uh, you guys did a, a great job in trying to uh, cover these issues and uh, help us uh, residents bring everything back online. So I would assume that maybe probably there's a lesson learned during those uh, incidents, and we will improve our interrupted power system uh, uh, testing procedure. And also, there's uh, 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 Western Internet, West Coast Internet, that it was also down in the same time. Uh, I'm not sure is that related to our supply or do they, is that related to their supply, uh, power supply? Is that uh, an issue that we should pursue and check it out, making sure that uh, those will not be affected, or is that just a broadband well, issue? I think that's a, a function of the, the, the broadband problems. Okay. Yeah, because that, that's the connection point. Uh, also, uh, there were some spiking that occurred as well that damaged some circuits over there, and so I know they were they were replacing and repairing as the weekend went on. And in fact, I had heard that that some some residents had problems with with their in home equipment, like their modems and things, and uh, particularly uh, they, on, they worked out pretty well because I guess they got to replace a few doxes <coughs> two modems with doxes three <laughs> modems. So. Um, <laughs> folks got an upgrade as part of the process. So um, I, would, I haven't actually received any complaints from internet customers, mainly probably because they got the, the new modem. But I think I would put, I would put the follow-up items into to three categories. And probably, probably I think the most important one is there's some, some uh, equipment deficiencies and uh, switch gears at clubhouses so we can bring temporary power in. Um, there's, uh, uh, there isn't backup generation at the transportation facility, which is a key, I mean, we, we really a key facility. It should have, they have a small gas generator only for the pumps. They don't have anything for, I mean, we couldn't have run a power wrench during this event. And if we had a real event, say, say a larger event where we had to uh, dispatch equipment, needed to make repairs to a, a dozer or a grader or something, we couldn't have had had the power tools to do that. So we've got to fix that. Uh, and then, uh, then I would, that's this equipment piece, and there's a pretty good list of that. And then I think there's a, uh, uh, a communications piece, which I think it was handled uh, pretty well, but there's always room for improvement there. We have code red. Probably don't have enough people trained on it. Um, <laughs> Correct. Yeah, we'll begin <laughs> and so there's more. some training there. It's a very powerful tool. We can reach every resident in the community with, with uh, a text, landline, and email, or a small segment of the community. And we just need to do, have some more individuals trained uh, on that. And so there's a few things like that where training's involved. Uh, clubhouse supervisors need a little more training on, on what they're doing there. If you have a you know, clubhouse full of folks and what's the best way to get them out of there and uh, safely, and, and, and so that, that thing can uh, go on. And then there's just some ongoing management things. For example, it's fine to, to test your power generators uh, weekly, you know, for 15 minutes to make sure they work. But you have to, you really need to test them under load. And so we've got to, on weekends and stuff, have a, have a couple times a year, uh, shut things down and fire them up under full load uh, because they perform a little bit differently than, than when you just turn them on to make sure the engine works. And so things like that, that you learn and, and, and toy with. And so I anticipate uh, we'll be following up with the security committee on a number of these. And there's a, probably uh, some of these things that we'll, uh, We'll talk to Jeff about in terms of backup generation and switch gears at clubhouses and things like that. That'll be a capital item moving forward. Right, and, and as Brad mentioned, and uh, Director Torn, you, you voiced some concern over just testing those uh, backup generators. And of course, that's what we do. And now we're doing a full audit as to um, what uh, additional testing needs to take place and why 
uh, that one generator, which was so critical to us, actually shut down on us. So we certainly want to prevent that in the future. As an interesting irony, um, come January 1st, we have a new uh, generator maintenance contract with a different firm. And so we had the old firm out all weekend you know, busting their tail right before the conclusion of their multi-year contract. So it was uh, a little odd, but uh, they did a good job. I have to credit them. Okay. Uh, thank, so, you, thank you, Steve. Oh. I really appreciate this. Uh, uh, I felt that our we needed this report from you just to set our residents' minds at ease. Uh, again, I got a lot of calls, and I have to say, folks, most of the calls were my TV is off. Not right. my electricity's off, not that I don't have air, but my TV is off. So that seemed to be one of the most important things. Uh, I think that uh, <clears throat> it's also important, as you said, that everybody in the village realize that we do have the emergency management team. It's not just for earthquakes. Right. A lot of people think, because we've done a lot of publicity on the uh, good neighbor captains and stuff like that for earthquakes. But when we turn the TV on and see the dangers of all the fires around us, we live next to a wilderness area. If there are fires, our incident command would also be in effect. And so we want the residents to know that, quite frankly, we're on top of it here in the village. And thanks to Chief Moy and the Emergency Preparedness Task Force, uh, we really have a good handle on what's going on. So, yes, Andre. Uh, there are actually two pieces of the uh, aftershock on this one. And first piece is the operation side. And Chief Moy, uh, the director Ernesto, and the Chuck really did a fantastic job taking care of those issues. The second aftershock would be the uh, what uh, General Manager uh, Brad Hudson has alluded uh, that uh, we will take care of all the issues, and uh, the industry standards is to do a stress test rather than just do a normal operation. Absolutely. Once we have the stress test, then we are sure that operation is most likely uh, normal operation is most likely going to uh, work well. So I thanks for the uh, you know effort in making these uh, things uh, putting on priority and making sure that. The, during the next incidents, hopefully it will never happen. But if it happens, then we will have a, a calm environment, and hopefully nobody will even notice that uh, things happen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Moy. All right, we'll go back to our CEO for the rest of his report. I will, I'll try to be brief here. I, I did uh, want to, and not that it, people need to be notified, but remind the community about the, the city's project on El Toro and uh, how inconvenient it is. Um, and so you might want to consider uh, using, uh, you know, gate six and two and three as an alternative to going out one and five at this point and, and trying to avoid uh, the work that's going on there, which I understand will continue through about the 20th. I think we sent a, an e-blast on there last Friday and so it has all the times and, and dates and, and when there'll be problems. Uh, in a similar vein, uh, the El Toro Water District has started on their project up at Gate 9 in 3rd. And uh, simultaneous, they're kind of doing the planning work for the work that's going to happen in United at Gate 5. And so they're, you'll see them out there uh, marking the asphalt and identifying <laughs> Ironically, identifying uh, underground infrastructure that they want to avoid as they're doing their project, and also marking uh, uh, where they're going to cut curbs and those sorts of things. So uh, that uh, will be coming in a couple of months. But but be advised, there'll be surveyors out there and, and other folks preparing for that that project. And I ask our residents to be mindful for for those workers who are out there. Um, you'll start hearing some communication on what we're now referring to. Uh, our bandwidth improvement program, formerly known as the uh, analog deletion program, where uh, we're going to be changing the way we we provide uh, uh, TV services to the community, uh, primarily to increase bandwidth for our uh, growing internet operation, but also to provide a better service for cable TV as well. So a lot going on there. You'll be seeing us on TV, and there'll be an article in the breeze, and I think there's a little program Chuck's producing about that. So we're going to be talking a lot about that 
Uh, nothing's going to happen right away, but over the coming months, there will be changes into our to our television uh, service, and we want you to be well informed. I think we have a town hall. I want to say it's uh, the tenth. Does that sound right? January, something like that. January tenth is what I'm thinking at four thirty <coughs> in this room, and so we'll have Chuck here and others to to chat with the community about uh, how we're going to improve uh, not only our cable TV service, but also uh, a much improved offering uh, in internet service as well. And so we're very, uh, very happy to bring that information uh, to you. Uh, I wanted to know, let you know that we had just uh, made a selection, which will be um, ratified by GRF shortly for the engineering firm uh, to be doing all the uh, gate work uh, in the coming year. And actually, they're going to be starting uh, pretty soon here. And so I'm anticipating there'll be significant work at Gates uh, 1, 2, and 3. Probably less significant at 4. Uh, it's an exit-only gate. We don't really deploy a lot of technology for people leaving the community. And, and if they, they don't belong here, we hope they leave rather quickly. We don't want to slow them down. Um, but that gatehouse there is, is, is pretty inadequate. And so it's likely most of the work at gate 4 will focus on that gatehouse. But I, I want you to also be mindful that We'll have engineering uh, teams out there doing survey work and marking uh, asphalt and concrete for that underground infrastructure to support the gate technology. And so I, I ask the residents also be mindful of those workers uh, who will be out there. Uh, following up on, uh, uh, on Chris, a um, lot of changes in customer service. And you know, I've been talking about the, you know, one-stop shop, the, the 24 7 365, the one call does it all stuff, and, and we've, we've been inching towards that. And there are many, many phone numbers that are no longer in use here that, that have been merged into our resident services number. The ones that are really out there still are uh, numbers like your recreation, uh, reservations, um, uh, also uh, certain security functions, and so those will be ones that'll that'll be, be brought in as well down the road. We have noticed uh, uh, a, a pretty marked decrease in the number of calls coming in. And that is not attributable to people wanting less services. It's attributable to when you answer the phone, people only call once. When you don't, they call five times. And so, so we've seen the number of calls reduced. Um, and I, I'm glad because I was quite shocked, actually, when I arrived here to see how many calls we got and how we were going to, to build a call center at a reasonable cost that would support that number of calls. But my suspicion is that as we continue to increase those numbers, uh, that as we uh, get rid of this paper uh, work order system and go to a digital system, that you're going to see uh, those calls reduce further and, and will lower uh, the amount we'll have to spend to provide uh, a reasonable uh, uh, CRM and, and other systems to support that. And so um, we're very pleased with that. It should, I, mean, I, I think I've told residents this before, but it's, it's good to note that every call that goes into the call center is recorded. And so when somebody reports a problem interaction, uh, we just go back and, and listen to the call and, and see what happened and, and see what actions the CSR taken. And, uh, and uh, so we can, we can unwind and investigate problem areas, and we do that. And so if, if residents have problems, we always like to hear about them because Chris will dive in and try to figure out what happened and then, and then incorporate that into the ongoing training program so it doesn't happen again. And so we're, we're very thankful when we get those calls from residents if, if things didn't work out uh, well for them. Um, we're getting fewer and fewer of those, though. Um, I did uh, want to let you know that uh, we're, we're going to make a selection shortly for the forensic study of Clubhouse One, and so some of your residents will likely uh, see our contractor and engineers out there drilling holes in the building and looking at things and, and to determine what the long-term functionality and use of that building should be. And so if you see somebody out there, they're, they're not doing anything wrong. They're, they're doing uh, this uh, investigative work on behalf of GRF in terms of, you know, uh, what kind of investments need to be made there uh, down the road. So I want you to be aware uh, of that. And then, uh, you know, we just added a new, a new service, which I really like, and we, we struggled a little bit how to do this, but it's the new uh, 
uh, events, clubs, and classes calendar, and uh, it, it kind of takes a team-up approach to all that. And so I believe that's available on our, our website now, and, and uh, uh, so you can, can really see what's going on throughout the village any day, what clubs are meeting, when, where, and uh, we really uh, thank uh, the clubs and, and others for providing that information uh, so we can, we can uh, get it to our residents. Really big challenge when you're first kicking something like that off because there's a, there's a lot of entries in there. And so recreation staff uh, did, a, did a great job uh, putting that, <laughs> there it is. Steve's got it. It's pretty elaborate. Um, and so we're, <laughs> we're pretty happy to have that done finally. Um, and then I just, I, given it's the end of the year, I, I'd be remiss in not reminding residents of, of some of the events we have going on. And unfortunately, the, our New Year's uh, gala and the Christmas dinner are sold out. Uh, but not to, not to fear because uh, we still have a few tickets left for December 31st with uh, uh, Papa Do Run Run. And this is not a tribute band. This is the <laughs> real deal. Make that clear. And uh, the evening showing uh, comes complete with appetizers and champagne. So it's a pretty good deal if you haven't made uh, uh, reservations yet or, or plans. Uh, it's a nice show to go seek. It's kind of, uh, I would say, surfer type mu music, uh, Beach Boy uh, sort of stuff. And so uh, I know a lot of our residents, including me, like that sort of thing. And so I, I welcome you for that. And, and then I, we do have a, uh, a Christmas movie on December 18th at 7.30, I Love the Coopers, which uh, if you've seen that, it's a, it's a pretty touching uh, a holiday movie. And so I, uh, I advise the community of that. So with that, uh, Madam Chairman, that completes my report. And uh, again, I thank everyone, uh, board members. I know we, we harassed you pretty hard over the weekend with updates and comments and things about this incident. And uh, uh, I was very pleased with the way our staff uh, per performed uh, with uh, the kinds of information that board members and residents provided to us that it, you know, assisted us in, in addressing issues. And uh, I think it was a good experience and, and we'll learn a lot and, and be better prepared next time around. Thank you. And I wouldn't call it harassing. I don't know about the rest of the board, but I want to be informed. And I thought it was wonderful the way we were kept informed all week on what was going on. So are there any questions from the board for the CEO, Teresa? I have a question regarding generator. Can I pose it now? Yes. Sure. Uh, the generator, uh, I don't know how it's handled over here. That's why I have a question. Uh, the switch over between generators and the line has got another uh, switch over gear. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure who handles this. Is it generator people handle this or? Yeah, that's part of our maintenance contract with the generator maintenance uh, company. And then it's under uh, Ernesto, <coughs> who's pretty knowledgeable there. <coughs> One of the things that we wanted to do is to, to have some portable generation and then uh, there you have a couple of clubhouses that don't have generators and but if you had the switch gear there you could <coughs> you could roll the the portable up there in case it was needed i think of, of maybe clubhouse five where um in the event of a disaster where you might want to use that uh, uh as a shelter that you would want to have backup generation there to run emergency lights in the kitchen and other things that would would make a lot of sense. But you may not have a need to have a big generator there all the time. And so that that's some of our thinking. And we'll, we're going to take that through committee and have a pretty ro robust discussion about the best way to serve those. And I, I know you're experienced in the area. And that, that would your expertise would be helpful as we have this discussion on how best to handle this. Thank you. Yes, Steve. To Brad, to Mark, about the events uh, <clears throat> calendar, uh, just to let everyone know, if you go to the website, uh, lagunawoodsvillage.com, on the first page, uh, at the bottom, it says calendars. And if you click on calendars, one of your options then becomes the events schedule. And... If you click on it, you will see everything for every day, for every week. It's 
remarkable. So I encourage everybody to get on your computer and go to the website and hit calendars and go to events and go, yay, good job. You know, one of the things I wanted to say and I, I'd forgotten um, is, you know, our website is available in multiple languages. And so uh, if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, I'm going to move that up to the top, but it's at the bottom now. It says select the language. And so the entire website is available in uh, more than a dozen languages. And so uh, now it doesn't help me saying this in English if somebody doesn't speak English out there. So we were going to, we were going to uh, send out an e-blast uh, in multiple languages and let people know that that's available as well as uh, that we will make uh, appointments uh, uh, here with the right uh, translator for those who, who need that. And so uh, we're getting that information out. want to make sure that, that everybody here, uh, regardless of their, their uh, proficiency in the English language, we're, we're here to, uh, to help. We're also, and, and these aren't quite available yet, but I think we're on the waiting list. And uh, um, this, I, shot, I, I actually got one over on Chuck here. The uh, Pixel Airbuds are coming out very shortly, and it's a device you wear kind of around your neck with 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 uh, ear uh, fl uh, plugs, and and it actually is kind of like Star Trek with the <laughs> Universal Translator. Now we're not, and so we're gonna we're on the waiting list for that, and we'll have that for use in resident services down the road. It's going to be a pilot pro program. We're just going to get one, and so uh, it works back and forth between. Uh, between the resident and the customer service representative using an Android, which we don't really have a lot of Androids around here, so we'll have to pick one up. There you go, I'll take Steve's. Um, and so we're anticipating that our communication uh, with, with these residents who have difficulty uh, uh, communicating in English uh, will be greatly improved. The other thing I wanted to let you know, and I don't know if we'll do it through VMS or through Emeritus, but I know we've met with Emeritus about uh, offering uh, ESL classes uh, with a little different focus. Um, you know, uh, maybe uh, a Mandarin uh, uh, to English or Farsi to English for residents who, who may need, need that kind of service. So I know the VMS board has been very interested in that. And so uh, Brian has been charged with investigating that so we can improve our communication with some of these residents. So it's a uh, it's going to be an interesting year. I look forward to it. One of the strengths we have in this uh, village is the diversity uh, in our community. And so we're really pleased to hear things going ahead with some of those things. If any of our residents are not aware, ESL means English as a second language. And so it helps people in other languages to uh, get conversational in some of the English that they may need to, to help them. Uh, just do their job, survive, enjoy life in the village. Andre. Uh, thank you very much, the General Manager Brett Hudson, for providing us uh, such good service. You know, I'm an immigrant here, but I've been here for over 40 years. Uh, but I know a lot of uh, uh, Chinese, Koreans, Japanese, they are not very fluent in English, so they are shy away from these language issues and they end up just stuck in their, their own communities. They got a lot of support, but they are not familiar with the, how to process all the information that come into them and they have trouble, you know, fit into this uh, community and because they just didn't know where to find information, how to proceed with uh, uh, issues that they encountered. So I really appreciate and if you need, uh, if VMS needs any support from the community, I would highly recommend, you know, uh, peoples from the, each community get involved. Uh, and uh, I fully support that each uh, community, uh, the different uh, ethnic groups supporting themselves and helping themselves. I think that's the goal that probably we need to uh, achieve. So uh, thank you very much for all the effort. Along with uh, 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 back in the resident service chart that we have uh, for, uh, uh, that we received from Chris Barr, I have some questions here. Uh, from that chart, uh, the histogram there in the middle, 
uh, we identified that the plumbing and in landscape are the biggest issues. So, and the, the rest are, are, you know, issues, but uh, these two seems to stand out. Uh, may I ask what needs to be done here? Uh, and uh, what kind of help uh, for, do you need from the board to reduce these uh, 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 counts? And what are the expectations that we have from uh, VMS point of view to reduce these, then, then how long will it take? And uh, uh, the last question is, uh, I understand there are some requests that are lost and not registered. What can, are, they, are they include these here? I wouldn't, I wouldn't think so. And how are we going to resolve those issues that have been there a long time, but uh, uh, resident complained and said, we, I put it in there, but never get any response back. So these are the four major issues. Yeah, I think the, uh, the landscape issues tend to be, be more transitory and, and, and sometimes uh, weather related. Uh, there are other factors that we like, like, well, last week's a pretty good example. It's, the wind you know, storm. we started our next uh, carport cleaning cycle about two days before the windstorm started. And so we got maybe 12 or 1400 carports done and then and then the wind kicked up and blew stuff back in the ones we just cleaned. I got a bunch of emails. Oh, they just cleaned my carport. Now all the stuff's back in there. But what are you going to do? You come back in a month uh, and say, no, we'll, we'll start over again. We're going to stop. We got to stop until the wind stops. It's senseless to continue this. And then, uh, then we'll start over again and, and get to you. So weather causes a lot of problems. Last year we had a lot of big storms, a lot of big trees down, and not so much in United. We lost a lot more, more trees in third, but, and so that kind of grinds things uh, to a halt as well. Then, of course, all the rain we had last year, we had a lot of growth. So I think, um, uh, I think some, and then we cut a big fire break too um, out there for, at the request of OCFA. So those things happen and they, they cause kind of uh, transitory sort of lags in, in when, uh, service requests are responded to. Also, a lot of things like well, tree trimming is a good example. Um, we're on a basically a three-year cycle, more or less, and so a lot of times, someone after a year and a half will say, "Well, gee, you know, that's that's blocking my my view here. I'd like you to to trim it." Well, it's pretty disruptive and inefficient to take these guys off a cycle uh, to trim that tree. And, and so there'd have to be something more significant going on than it, it you know, I want it, want it smaller to, to take folks off a cycle and move them to another part of the community where they're not working. Um, and we do it, but it's got to be something more like an unhealthy tree or a, a dangerous limb or those sorts of things. Um, we, and we try not to, not to do too much of that. We do a little bit of that with street lights where the supervisors keep a pretty good eye on those. And if it, if a tree is blocking the light from a street light, we'll go off cycle and come back and, and clean that up so it's, it's safer for the community. But those are the sorts of things that grind it down. Oftentimes, too, um, this is a very tough labor market. And if you have a bunch of people retire or get sick or something, it's a little harder to find people right now because I think the unemployment rate in Orange County is, is a functionally zero. Um, and so if you want to hire somebody here, you've got to take them from somebody else because um, everybody's working. So those things kind of contribute. Landscaping is, is unique in that regard. That has a lot of things that affect it. And then, and then you can also have a situation where, where maybe um, you have a, a supervisor or an area that is particularly problematic and generating uh, a lot of problems. And so that can strain other resources as you move people around to try to address that. And so we've had some of that as well. So we've had all of the above. Uh, in the last year or so, um, and I'm glad the winds don't look like they're blowing so hard now because you basically are cleaning up for the next week after everything that happened the last week, and you're not making as much progress uh, on your sort of the, the types of cleanup and trimming that we normally do this time of year. So the less we have of, of that sort of thing, uh, the better. We do have much improved systems uh, in landscaping now. We have almost all of our supervisors are processing supervisor requests uh, electronically now. And so um, that is much more efficient and they don't get lost. 
um, when you're shuffling a piece of paper around in trucks and things between different facilities, that, that, that's a bad way to go. And we are very close to uh, moving to an electronic work order system for our other functional areas as well. We were kind of piloting it in landscaping. Um, on plumbing, again, uh, uh, to me, that it's the most serious issue we really have in the community because when you have failures in plumbing, it's very disruptive for residents. It costs a lot of money to restore uh, the facilities. And I think your board's aggressive and proactive approach with things like you know, epoxy lining and, and the copper pipe lining um, are going to make a huge, huge difference. I think also uh, our new initiative to discontinue the practice of having uh, security personnel uh, and resident services, customer service reps uh, try to diagnose plumbing issues remotely. Uh, we've stopped that practice. They're not doing that anymore. If we have a plumbing issue, we call a plumber out. Uh, we've got uh, plumbing crews uh, on the weekends, and so they will respond. And I think I shared this maybe at a committee meeting, but I'll share it again here. Over the four-day uh, Thanksgiving holiday, uh, we had our plumbers working, as we usually do on the weekends, and they responded to 41 plumbing calls uh, during those four days, so 10 a day. That, that doesn't sound like a whole lot for Thanksgiving. And then we had uh, two that were call outs. Uh, one, we called out an on-call VMS staff person. The other, we have uh, Orange County uh, Plumbing on call as well, and they came out and handled the call as well. So we're not anymore, they used to be, you have a, say you have a, a clogged up toilet over the weekend or something, a security person would come out and look at it. Well, you've got another bathroom, that'll wait till Monday. Well, and that works most of the time, but when it doesn't work, then that resonance out of the manor, you got a lot of damage, um, there's problems. So we're not doing that anymore. If there's a plumbing issue in a manor, a plumber will be out to look at it and take care of it. And so I think in the long haul, combining that with your epoxy program, I think you're gonna see these plumbing calls go down over time. As you continue to do these uh, proactive programs, we'll have I think less expenses in these and, and call outs and less resident uh, discomfort uh, from these reactive calls that we do a lot of. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Yes, uh, 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 Ray, sorry. Uh, Cash. Sorry, I, let me finish my uh, okay. uh, question. First of all, Andre, these are questions you should have brought up when Chris was here. Right. These are our questions no, these are about not, her report. No, th these are not Chris's uh, responsibility to, to improve. It's the general manager's responsibility to improve. Uh, Chris just collect these numbers, right? No. How does to, how Chris's Chris responsibility answer? for all of this is to make sure it's done correctly. Is that is that I, so? Chris is responsible oh, for. I am calling the agenda. All right, we have one more question from Cash. Okay. Uh, we can talk about this later, Andre. Uh, you're doing a very uh, excellent job. But one thing I would like to see, the, the biggest problem is the plumbing. Maybe we should split that into different categories, such as sewer uh, uh, problems or uh, bathroom problems or whatever, uh, so that we can tackle each one. Separately. Yeah, I think Ernesto has some subdivisions here that we can get you. Um, this is really, I mean, I, I know they, that waste and supply mm -hmm. are different and, right. and they keep track of that differently. It seems in my mind that, yeah, we have supply problems. Those are your, your pressurized copper pipes, but we, we, it seems like most of our problems tend to fall in the, uh, in waste the waste area. Supply, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, <clears throat> later on in our meeting today, Ernesto is going to be in giving us a report, and I think he's going to cover some of these things, but that's the time then again for those questions. Steve? And I would just like to respectfully recommend to all of the directors that if they have specific questions of process or procedure, that they approach their committee chairs of finance or MNC or whatever, because Don and myself as co-chairs of MNC are in uh, a great resource and have a lot of information. Project logs are put out every month, and um, 
you know, you can get that information directly from your fellow board members and committee chairs rather than having to take the time in a, in a board meeting that it extends it. That would just be my recommendation. All right, we will move on to agenda item number 10, which is our open forum. At this time, <coughs> members may address the board of directors regarding items that are not on the agenda. If they're on the agenda, we ask that you wait and speak at the time it's brought up on the agenda. Uh, you have a maximum time well, limit of three minutes, which will be shown to you uh, on the lectern there. And I call for it. Uh, do, Cheryl, do we have? Yes, we Sorry. have two requests to speak. And the first one up is Chris Collins. Good morning, uh, Chris Collins, 3306Q. Today, I'm here to give an update on another aspect of the work done by the Foundation of Laguna Woods Village on behalf of village residents. Donations to the Foundation of Laguna Woods Village help keep the holidays bright for needier residents in the village while also helping throughout the year. This year, donations have permitted the foundation to adopt over 150 seniors in the village who need some extra holiday cheer. With the help of social services and the South County Outreach Food Pantry, the foundation was able to identify those in need of holiday cheer and provide village seniors with both a special holiday meal and a gift. <coughs> so something they would not have otherwise. The holiday meal would take the form of, of a cooked dinner or a State of Brothers gift card so the recipient could make their own meal. In addition, each participant was given a gift card to either Target or J.C. Penney to purchase a gift of their own choosing. While this special effort is focused on the holidays, donations in response to the foundation's recent appeal permit the foundation to provide temporary financial assistance to village residents and to build on partnerships for helping. For example, in addition to its regular efforts, the foundation is currently focusing on ensuring needy residents can avail themselves of two simple emergency care measures, which can be life-saving on occasion, medical alert systems, and the care ambulance policies to ensure affordable ambulance transport when a medical emergency arises. For more information about obtaining these emergency measures due to financial need, please contact Social Services at 949-597-4267 or contact the Foundation online at the foundation at comline.com or by phone, which is 949-268-2246. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> and thank you all at the Foundation for what you do for our residents. We are unique in our foundation and our social services to almost any other HOA. And uh, it's a, a great benefit to our, our residents. Okay, our next speaker. Our Cheryl. next speaker is Maxine McIntosh. Good morning. I was so glad that uh, Juanita Skillman, our president, had to stand up at the beginning of the meeting so we could all see the beautiful green tree on the front of her sweater. <laughs> so Christmassy. Um, we members living in United really need this board to protect our interests also, uh, regarding GRF plans. You do a great job with the responsibilities that are designated just for United. But also we need that activity uh, regarding GRF. The GRF is planning to spend twice as much money as necessary to move and greatly enlarge pickleball accommodations, spending nearly $800,000. Remember when Lori Moss, our community manager, spoke to all of us at the GRF budget meeting, uh, a GRF budget meeting, stressing that we would all need to tighten our belts and specifically said, including pickleball, do not expect to have 12 new courts. For a while, GRF tried to keep costs below 500,000, but last week that changed. They increased the uh, construction budget to nearly $800,000 for starters. The high construction costs are not all. 
we would also have to pay for the increased maintenance costs for the rest of our lives. We need to keep a nicely renovated pickleball facility in its present location. The renovation would also include additional courts. Courts are old, they crack like the laundry room floors, like tennis courts, like patio floors, and need to be replaced or repaired eventually. The move across the street by Clubhouse 7 is too costly, and the fact that golfers want the current pickleball property for themselves must not even be considered. All members of the village, all of us, already pay over three and a half million dollars each year to run golf for about 900 members of the village who play golf. I thought we had finally put GRF, big, unnecessary spending, behind us in 2014 when the housing mutual boards were on their way to a recall of several GRF board officers, but they actually resigned moments before the recall vote could be taken. Please protect United Mutual from this. Please direct GRF to return to a program of conservative spending for necessary improvements of all projects. Those of you who sit on the GRF committees, please debate, even argue, GRF issues that sound too costly for United. Thank you. Thank you, Maxine. Our next speaker, Cheryl. <laughs> Our next speaker is Mosin Ashti. Good morning. I had a problem with my patio covering permit. My appeal to resolve this dispute was denied on November 14. My friend, who is an attorney, advised me that under the law, a disability has to be considered. My disability, like most foreign born citizens, is that English is not my mother language. I cannot therefore express my thoughts and defend my case in a short period like a US born citizen. As a result, my appeal was with Architectural Control Committee on October 24th was denied. The issue of my disability was not considered in my hearings, and I was told to be silent when I was explaining related technical points about the matter, and the guilty verdict was given, which I believe was unfair. I'd like to resolve this misunderstanding in a friendly and fair manner, considering my disability. Per my attorney's advice, I request that this be done through new hearing and discussion per internal dispute resolution, Civil Code 5925-5965. I thus kindly request that I be allowed to express my defense in architectural committee with con consideration given to my disability and in a new cooperative environment. I also promise to provide a written defense to minimize my disability of being able to articulate verbally my explanation in English language. This will also give a chance to directors to read and fully understand my technical points regarding the covering of the patio, so a fair resolution can be achieved. I am in hope for your kind consideration. Thank you. Another speaker, Cheryl? Yes, we have <coughs> Tara Abbasi next. Good morning. Uh, I didn't know I can talk in front of you, but uh, I did not prepare any paper. All I need to let you know, a um, few months back, I, per, uh, I bought the um, condo in gate 14, and I request for landscaping to pull out some of the roof and then uh, fix the fence in front of my uh, unit. And it's been more than four months, almost five months, nobody take care of that. Excuse I, me, Mrs. Rossi. 
This is United. We have nothing to do with Third Mutual's Gate 14. You're at the wrong meeting. Oh, but how come nobody told me about that? You know, that <laughs> is the problem. I came here. All right, condos are Third Mutual. Co-ops are United Mutual, that oh. we are. And uh, Third Mutual has both the Landscape Committee and their board meeting will be next <coughs> Tuesday. Next they Tuesday? They meet on the third Tuesday of the month. And so... I'm coming. But That's you know, for. one of the things I'd like to, I like this community and I want to improve everything about it. Some of the things when we call here and they re refer us to go online, go here, instead of simply they just ask, I ask, when is the uh, meeting time? And they say, go online and you can find it. This is not right. Maybe I am not able, like my mom, not able to go online. So they have to know all the information in front of them and they let us know, you know, when is the date of the, uh, you know, meeting and what time is it. Okay. Thank you so much. I really Very appreciate good. It. And as Chris said, that's what we're working towards. <clears throat> all right. Are there any other speakers? That concludes the request to speak. <clears throat> all right. Uh, we will go to... The next item on the agenda, number 11, which is responses to the open forum speakers. Are there any responses from the board? <coughs> Janie? I'd like to address Mr. Asadi. Mr. Asadi, you went ahead and you remodeled your unit without a permit. That is a violation within the city and also within our own permit department we have had lots of discussions with you through our committee and there is really nothing we can do i'm very sorry all right any other responses steve to maxine um i want you to take some comfort in my assurance to you that I believe both myself and Don Tibbetts serving as on, on the GRF uh, MNC committee are fully committed to ensuring that GRF does a good job for a reasonable cost and what's good for the entire community. Um, and I hear frequently from members of the entire community, whether they're from United or elsewhere, about the exorbitant spending that seems to be occurring. And I just want to present one fact, which I tripped upon yesterday in my own research. The GRF dues for 2017 we're $193.61 per man or per month. What do you think they were in 1996? $186.83. So seeing a $7 increase in the amount of dues over a 21-year period, I think GRS being very cost efficient. So. That was my only remark. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and again, Maxine, uh, you know that our open forum are items that are within our jurisdiction of our board. Mm -hmm. And you really need to speak to GRF because that is not within the jurisdiction of our board, with the exception of our members that serve on that committee. But And we are corporate members, but the whole issue has to come through GRF. Right, are there any other responses? Yes, Manuel. Yeah, my response is to Maxine. Uh, Maxine, I believe we're going to have a special meeting in January mm -hmm. of all the corporate members regarding this issue. And I agree with you 100% that I think we need to go back to the drawing board and reconsider just improving the facility that currently exists at a much more reasonable cost. That's where we started, and I think that's where we ought to end. And I think quite a few of the directors on United are thinking the same way I am. At least I hope they are. That's all I have to offer at this point. Okay, Andre. 
Uh, in response to Maxine's uh, uh, question about uh, uh, GIF spending, uh, first I would like to say I'm not against a uh, good pickleball court. Um, at this point, we have so many things on the United Board that we need the money to improve, uh, like the sewage system, like the foundation system, like the dry rot system, like uh, uh, plumbing issues. We have so many issues that have been ignored in the past. We, I'm personally, I'm not against the uh, new pickleball court. I think it's a good idea. I think just priority-wise, we need to identify what are the must, been, must uh, needs and wish lists. Um, the must needs to be done, uh, spend or, or prioritize all the money. At this point, the three boards come up with their own budget plans and they're not coordinated. So some priorities are uh, somewhat differently. So what I would recommend at this point is that we need to prioritize, put all the three plans together and work together three uh, or four uh, uh, mutuals working together as a team to prioritize the spendings and get the most critical things done first. I understand that uh, GIF is not spending a lot of extra monies during the past few years, but uh, they've also increased a lot of fees and that caused a lot of uproars with the uh, community. So it's, it is necessary to, for the uh, United Board to call, uh, request a meeting, corporate meeting, to discuss those issues, and those issues will be addressed in there. If you have any questions, uh, I hope that the uh, meeting is open to the general public and so they can express their concerns there. Thank you very much. Maggie. This is a united meeting. This is a united meeting. These items should be discussed at GRF meetings. These are not for us to express our personal opinions of the directors at this time. All of those things are done at united, I mean at GRF committee meetings and at GRF meetings. It's un inappropriate for us every meeting here in United 12 months of the year to have a discussion about what another board is doing. I hope that you are interested in what we are doing for United. We cannot, otherwise we'd have to have a round table right here for everyone's opinion to be expressed, all 11 opinions to be expressed on what the other boards are doing. And that is not correct, it is not our place. So I call for us to be mindful as residents and directors of the correct forum for your topic. Thank you so much. You all vote on their committees. That's right. Thank you, Maxine. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I'll just finish up with the responses by saying to all of our members, United did co call a corporate members meeting. <clears throat> GRF rescinded the contract on the pickleball court, has gone back to the drawing board, is redoing their plans, and that's why the corporate members meeting is now January 30th, when they can present to us all of the options and uh, relooks what they have done so uh, I, I think we need to wait and see what they present to us at that time. Uh, we'll now go to uh, item number 12, which is the consent calendar. Is there anything on the consent calendar that a director would like to remove? Raisa? I'd like uh, to see that this one motion thing changes at least we can make the approval as one and denial as another one. I'm sorry, I don't understand. A consent calendar is either either approve or deny. Yeah, if you don't want motion. to approve. With one motion. With one motion, yes. yes. If there's something on here that you want to pull and vote on separately, this yes. is the time to tell us. And we will pull it and do it separately. In general, I'm talking, not in this uh, In general, there, a consent calendar is a consent calendar. I don't understand. I'm sorry, you're, 
object we don't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, item I seven. understand what he's saying. Denial. Excuse me, Juanita. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to introduce my correction now. Okay. Because it's on this consent calendar. All right. It has to do with item uh, would, seven, no. which is back on page uh, 22 right. or 22, agenda item yeah. 12A. And on that page at the top, it should have this reference. It should have a heading that says resolution 01-17-3Xs. And then it should have the title denial of appeal. Right now it has nothing. It just takes you into that section. That's just a correction in the uh, All right. Attachment. Well, it, it is part of the resolution that starts on page I 11. Understand. I understand it was a separate resolution as part of that. No. So it should have a heading at the top. Well, page 22 of 22. No, I understand, but uh, basically it is the whereas, therefore be it resolved, that goes with the rest of all this. All of them have a heading. From 11. All of them have a heading. Each no, they one don't. Of. Yes, they do. <laughs> there's, there's a resolution heading. The various requests, the resolution 07117, whereas. Yeah. Everyone has a heading. This one doesn't. Well, it's, Should part, have a heading. it's part of the resolution that starts on page 15 that does that. This is all part of that variance requests. <clears throat> so it, it's all part of the same resolution. It's a long one, but that's part of it. All right, I would no, like a motion. It's a separate one. It's a different one. It's the denial. It's not, not got nothing to do with the one on page 15. Take another look at it. OK. Karen, I know I'm right. Uh, Madam President, we can make that correction for the minutes. All right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Ten. Very All right. simple. All right. You may have a motion to uh, accept the consent calendar. Steve, they is there a second? These together and then they correct Don. Them. All right. All those in favor of accepting the items on the consent calendar, which are Architectural Control and Standard Committee recommendations and Finance Committee recommendations. Please raise your hand. Those who would not like to accept this, deny it. One. All right. So we are nine to one. <coughs> okay. Uh, on to uh, number 13, unfinished business. These are things that uh, were introduced in October but required a 30-day notification to our members. And there was not 30 days between October and November. And that's why they've been pushed on to December. Uh, it's <clears throat> kind of a shame that's happened five different times in this calendar year because of the way the calendar is set up. That instead of 30 days, we've had to go to 60 days. Uh, but we'll start with 13A. And Madam Secretary, would you read the resolution, please? Resolution 0117XXX, whereas variance requests require significant staff time for proper processing, including research, report preparation, and then presentation to the appropriate committee and then the board. And whereas in order to offset administrative costs associated with processing variance requests, which is often followed by an appeal of the board's decision as mandated in accordance with resolution 0109101. And whereas the mutual currently charges a $100 fee to offset administrative costs associated with processing various variance requests, and whereas the board realizes the fee should be non-refundable. Now, therefore, be it resolved, December 12, 2017, that in order to partially further offset administrative costs associated with processing variance requests, which is often followed by an appeal of the board's decision as mandated in accordance by resolution 0109101, the board of directors of this corporation hereby sets the variance request processing fee at $150 and resolve further that resolution 0116113 adopted December 13, 2016 
is hereby superseded and canceled and resolved that the further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out the purpose of this resolution. I move this resolution. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. <clears throat> Janie? Any discussion? Yes, Andre. If we look at the previous resolution, we just changed to $100 December 13 last year. And this year we are increasing by 50%. Uh, do we made an estimate incorrectly last time or is this one that just, uh, wh why is this 50% increase so much within a year? That's, that was my question. Okay. Uh Jane? What staff had found, they did a certain, they went back. What are you trying to tell me? No, responses to the chair, not to the person. No, I'm responding to you. She's the chair of the committee, and she has the information that I don't, Andre. Right. Really so I called on her. Communication is to the chair, not to individual. Right. Just so just announce it. Don't give it to Andre. <coughs> just announce the answer. Yeah. To the chair. Go ahead. No, I'm responding to you. No. No. Go ahead. Staff did a survey. They went back into the old records and the staff time involved in a lot of processing. Please. Uh, ask the, the I, as chair, recognized her and asked her as chair of the committee to respond. To you, not to me. Well, Rule, to the board. Robert's rule says. <coughs> Andre, thank you. Janie, please just respond. I'll look this way. There we go. Yeah, yeah okay. that's good. <laughs> Sometimes, Andre, you drive me crazy. Oh. I am sorry. Anyway, there had been a study done by staff, and the expenses of staff's time, I believe that they were in a deficit. <laughs> Just a, thank you. I can say it now. Uh, of around twenty-six or thirty-two thousand dollars last year in the whole in this department dealing with staff time and fees. That's one of the main reasons that this resolution has come to the board. Thank you. I have a motion by Maggie and seconded by Janie to approve uh, <clears throat> the motion to adopt a resolution on the fee schedule for unit alterations. Everyone in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Okay. Eight to two. All right, uh, <clears throat> 13B, I'll <clears throat> ask the secretary to read that resolution. Madam President, didn't we read these last week? Yes, but that was the first reading, and right. we give that to the residents so they know what we're looking at, and they have 30 days to get in touch with us with any information, and so this is the time that we actually pass those motions. I have a wording change <coughs> at the first paragraph. You'll, you'll hear it. Uh, resolution 0117XXX, whereas in order to partially offset mutual costs associated with contractors and residents performing alterations that have damaged mutual property or violated mutual policies, such as e illegally throwing away construction debris in the mutual dumpsters or not following the proper protocol for regulated materials, and whereas the mutual currently does not require any conformance deposit fee capture, and whereas the mutual desires to enact a one-year pilot program beginning January 1, 2018, to study the effectiveness of the conformance deposit. Whereas the fee will be required for all construction with a value of $500 or greater, and it be refundable given that the contractor or resident performing the alteration conforms to all mutual rules and standards. Now, therefore, it be it resolved December 12, 2017, 
than in order to partially further offset mutual costs associated with contractors and residents performing alterations to their manor. The Board of Directors of this corporation hereby sets a conformance deposit fee at $250. Resolve further that Resolution 01-17105, adopted September 12, 2017, is hereby superseded and canceled, and resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry about, out the purpose of this resolution. I move this resolution. Do I have a second? I'll second. <clears throat> Don? All right, is there any discussion on this one? <clears throat> Andre? Uh, this involves illegal dumping of uh, construction materials in the, uh, our dumpsters. So I would uh, ask, uh, what is the cost of asking waste management to haul those uh, construction materials uh, specifically because of this kind of offense? This. Steve? This originally came up, Andre, months ago through the alterations department as requiring possibly a much larger conformance deposit. I'm answering your question. Address to the, please address to the chair. Yes. Uh, point of order. Robert's Rules gives me, as the chairman, the responsibility to give you an answer to your question, and it is my responsibility then to turn it over to the most knowledgeable person about this, Whether at, and it's usually a committee chair. He is maintenance and construction. And so <clears throat> he answers to the community, to the board, not just specifically to you. Go so ahead, Steve. if I may begin again. This was originally put under consideration for a much larger amount of a deposit, given that some alterations contracts run into in excess of $100,000 worth of renovations. And staff felt and made a recommendation that they would like to do a pilot program for one year with a minimum amount of deposit to see how that program would run in the first year and then take a look at it for future expansion for greater amounts of money depending on the amount of work that was done. So this is scaled back from the original concept. It is a pilot program. It has been discussed, considered, and moved. And now we're taking the final vote on it. Any other discussion? Yes, Andre. Uh, I, I don't think that that was the, uh, the question I asked. Uh, my question was how much does it cost uh, waste management to <coughs> pick up the contractor's uh, waste? All right, I if recognize. It's a, let, me, let me explain it. If it no, cost you them, have explained it. Thank you. Well, let me ask it to the question, and that no, Brad would I you haven't give finished, us. I haven't finished the question yet. <laughs> If it costs uh, twenty dollars each time, then this two hundred fifty dollars is maybe excessive. If it costs five hundred each time, then this two hundred fifty dollars is probably short. So we need to identify what is the cost if we don't execute this, uh, pass this resolution. I'm not against passing the re resolution. I'm just questioning the number. Is that number justified, and whether it, the number is uh, uh, will cover the cost or not? <coughs> Well, that's a good question. I guess we're going to figure some of that out oh, as we go okay. through this. But it's important to note that yes. waste management won't haul off construction material. So I have to have your custodial staff go and remove that material from the dumpster and then take it up to the maintenance yard and put it in a dumpster that's meant for construction material. And so it, it's, it, if you have to do that too many times, uh, this isn't going to cover it. But it's important to note, this isn't just for construction materials, for broken sprinklers. And we have a lot of contractors that, that clean their tools on the landscaping, uh, particularly concrete uh, working tools, and damage a lot of the landscaping as well. There's a number of things that this might cover. Um, and then maybe last, last, but certainly not least, is 
they need to come in for a final inspection. And oftentimes, when the work's done, they don't want to mess with it anymore. It's done. And so this would provide an additional incentive to come in and get that final inspection so we can close our books and move on uh, to the next project. So there's a, it does a number of things. I doubt if you actually have to do very much that 250 is going to going to cover a whole lot. Um, so I, I think it's a, I wouldn't call it de minimis, but it, it's it is, approaching it. It is refunded if there is no yes. problems. All right, thank I have you, a motion. Thank you very much. That's the message I want to communicate to our residents. Thank you. Uh, President um, Skillman, we have one request this week. Yes, speak. I'm sorry. Barbara? <clears throat> I don't usually speak anymore, but I have been sitting here as a loyal attendee, listening to the grandstanding that has gone on by a director. Obviously, they are ill-informed. If they came to a meet <clears throat> excuse me, meeting, uh, having studied their agenda and found out the ramifications of the resolutions that have been presented, there would be less need for conversation. This is not the place to debate. It is the place for voting. Kindly observe some rules on this. Thank you, Barbara. I have a motion by Maggie, and it was seconded by Don, uh, to accept a resolution for a conformance deposit for unit alterations. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed? All right, eight to two. The motion passes. And we will go to item 13C. <coughs> Would you please read the resolution, Madam um, Secretary? Policy for handling <coughs> oops, resolution 0117XX, policy for handling and destruction of recordings for board and committee meetings, whereas United Laguna Woods Mutual contracts with Village Management Services, Inc. for management services pursuant to the terms of a management agreement, and whereas United's board holds regular board meetings which during which minutes are taken in accordance with United's bylaws and the management agreement, whereas committees appointed by the board also hold meetings during which minutes are taken in accordance with United's bylaws and the management agreement, whereas United desires to strengthen procedures with respect to documenting and maintaining meeting minutes. Now, therefore, be it resolved, December 12, 2017, United's Board of Directors of this corporation hereby establishes the following policy with respect to the handling and destruction of recordings from board and committee meetings. Number one, the recording secretary will cause the board and committee meetings to be audibly recorded to facilitate efficient and accurate taking of meeting minutes. Two, the recording secretary will maintain custody and control of all such recordings. Three, all such recordings are not subject to inspection by members of United. Only the board and VMS staff will be provided access to such recordings. And four, all such recordings will be destroyed following the approval of the meeting minutes by the board and or committee in question. Resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. I move this resolution. Do I have a second? second. Janie? Any discussion? <coughs> Andre? Yeah, I want to clarify that. Uh, now, therefore, be the resolve that number three, all such recordings are not subject to inspection by members of the United, only the board members and the VMS staff will be provided, because when you say board, I'm not exactly sure what this board stands for. I, I think you mean board members, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, can we add, just add, modify this board members? Uh, it states, all such recordings are not subject to inspection by members of just United, resident. only the board and VMS staff will be provided access to such recordings. <coughs> yes, my question is only the board. All right, we can add the word members board after members. board. Yeah. Uh, if you don't understand that the 
Board directors. The board directors. Board directors. Board yeah. directors. Okay. Right. <clears throat> okay. Enough. I have a motion by Maggie that has been seconded by Janie. All those in favor of adopting a resolution for the handling and destruction of recordings for executive board and committee meetings, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Are you voting, Andre? Oh, I thought I voted it, yes. No, you didn't keep it up long enough to be counted. <laughs> Since we are doing it by hand voting, please keep it up until we're sure that we have all of the votes. All right, we'll go on to <clears throat> number 13D. And uh, would you read that resolution, please, Madam Secretary? Resolution 0117XXX, revision of section 31, windows and window attachments. Whereas United Laguna Woods Mutual established rules related to window modifications and installations through its alteration standards and standard plans, specifically section 31, windows and window attachments, and whereas approval of non-standard window modifications and installations have been handled through the variance request process, and whereas United Laguna Woods Mutual recognizes <coughs> VMS Manor alteration staff is qualified to determine whether a proposed alteration meets the architectural and aesthetic requirements for the community. Now, therefore, be it resolved on December 12, 2017, the Board of Directors of United Laguna Woods Mutual hereby revises Section 31, Windows and Window Attachments, Subsection 2.0, applications with the following requirements. 2.1, retrofit windows shall be defined as those installations where the original window frame is not removed. 2.2, window modification shall be defined as those installations which alter the width or height of an existing window. All window modifications shall comply with the requirements of this standard and the principles of standard plans. 2.3, new windows shall be defined as those installations that include installation of a new window in a location that did not previously contain a window. All new windows shall comply with the requirements of the standard and the principles of the standard plans. 2.4, window modifications and new windows shall not adversely affect the structural integrity or aesthetics of the manor or the surrounding manors. 2.5, top of window heights shall match those of existing windows on the same side of the building. 2.6, Size and location of windows shall be as per standard plans. 2.7, window frames, I'm deleting the S on windows. Window frames must be white vinyl only. Window frames and glazing shall match existing windows in all aspects and shall comply with the requirements set forth in this standard. Resolve further, the member is required to comply with all of the contingencies typically required for a mutual consent. And resolved further that resolution 011608, adopted January 12, 2016, is hereby amended. And resolved further, the agents, officers, and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out the purpose of this resolution. I move this resolution. Do I have a second? <coughs> Cash? All right, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion? All right, we'll vote. All those in favor of this rest of oh, Maxine, did you put in a card? I hope I was listening carefully. I just wanted to ask. Uh, it's good that, that staff will be held to these standards when they make these decisions. But uh, when someone wants a uh, wants to pursue a deviation from the usual pattern or from the standards that staff is working with, does staff make that decision about that, or will it come back to Janie's committee? It gets a variance. Thank it you. It goes back to alterations committee. I think it's a wonderful <coughs> idea. Then. Thank Janie, you. do you ever? 
I wanted to make a little bit of a comment on this. We are standardizing a lot of different alteration requests. Uh, some of the next that you may be seeing is bathroom splits. We have that on our so agenda. So we're just trying to make this simplified and a lot easier for our members. All right, uh, all those in favor of this motion, please raise your hands. All those opposed? Raisa, are you voting? Okay. Were you not there? Do you not understand the motion? Yeah, I do understand. But well, then you vote <coughs> for it or against it. Abstain means you don't understand it, you weren't there, there's something like that. Or if you have a conflict. I would vote no, All right, okay. then you'll be against it. Okay. <coughs> nine to one. So it's nine to one. The okay. motion passes. All right, uh, 13E, entertain a motion to adopt the amended financial qualifications policy. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I would like to add one thing to that as we vote for this. And that is to the staff report on page 7 of 9 that goes with this resolution. If you look at the bottom of 6, it talks about membership is... Uh, starts and one of the things that was left out which would be the last of uh, the fourth point on page seven is close of escrow membership cannot start until escrow is closed and our property services division tells us that they have a drawer full of applications <clears throat> membership certificates that have been developed escrow was <clears throat> never closed and so those have just sat there, they, they do not go forward. So we're at close of escrow as a, uh, a point there. Uh, now would you read the resolution? Resolution 0117XX, Financial Qualifications Policy. Whereas it is in the best interest of the corporation to protect and preserve the financial integrity of the corporation. Now therefore be it resolved, December 12, 2017, that the minimum financial requirements for membership are adopted per the United Laguna Woods Mutual Financial Qualifications Policy attached. Resolve further that staff is hereby directed to disseminate this information to the realty community serving Laguna Woods Village and resolve further that resolution 01 1793 adopted August 8, 2017 is hereby superseded and canceled, and resolved further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. I move this resolution. Do I have a second? Done. All right. Any discussion? Yes, Andre. I do have a question about uh, income requirements. Uh, We're not addressing that in this one. That will be in D when we get down to new business. So what is the, the minimum financial requirement for membership adopted per? Uh, According to this resolution, credit? if we pass it, it stays the way it is. It stays the, the things way that is. are being changed in this revision to the financial qualification policy are shown <clears throat> Uh, in the staff report, and they include where there's more than one occupant using the manor as their primary residence, the income and assets can be calculated collectively. That general corrections to be consistent with the newly adopted bylaws, that prospective shareholders must submit a recognized credit reporting agency, a full credit report, and a FICO score dated within 60 days of application, and that guarantors may guarantee the financial, financial obligation of only one membership. Those are the things that are covered in this particular resolution. My question is related to the income requirements, a full credit report, and a FICO score dated within 60 days prior to the application submittal. As you know, I'm an immigrant, and sometimes the, some of the immigrants may not have the full credit report and a FICO score established in the United States. So will they be a, a, in a disadvantage in purchasing units in this community? Yes, Steve. 
I believe you've already asked that question in prior meetings and it's been answered. Right. I don't understand why you raise it in a board meeting on television when you've already raised a concern and you've been given an answer. I think an answer of yes or no would be probably The answer right. is yes. Yes, so it will be restricted. Our restrictions the... say that all assets must be in the continental United States. They cannot be I'm not assets, saying assets from a board. I'm not saying <coughs> assets. I have no problem. But we with also assets. told you in previous meetings that if there is a, an exception, they can appeal. They right. can ask for a variance on this resolution. These are general resolutions for all of our resale packages. And if there is something that is an exception, we handle it then as an exception, which is the prerogative of the board. I think we had a, a discussion uh, in, during our meeting on whether it's close or not. I'm not, I don't remember uh, that uh, if there's a discrimination, then it would be an uh, issue. The one way that we can prove that we are not discriminating is to provide statistics and establish statistics that prove that we are not uh, discriminating uh, new immigrants. And I thought that was determined that we will have that kind of statistics, but I don't see that established here. So do we, uh, will we establish statistics or not? Maggie? The board has discretion. Right. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to call for vote. Uh, the ma <clears throat> excuse me, the motion has been made by uh, Maggie and seconded by Don. All those in favor of, entertain, of adopting the amended financial qualification policy, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Okay, eight to two. The, thought, <clears throat> the motion passes. All right, now we get to number 14, which is our new business. And I would remind our residents that almost everything that we do, there is one change here, but most of what we do requires a 30-day notification. So the resolution that is read today will not be voted on to finalize it until our January meeting. Uh, we have one exception, and that is C, that does not require member notification. So let's start with A, and if you would read that uh, resolution, please, Madam Secretary. Resolution 0117XX. Financial Qualifications Policy. Whereas it is in the best interest of the corporation to protect and preserve the financial integrity of the corporation, whereas selling prices within the village are within the county's affordable housing limits, and whereas guarantors in the committee have increased and some have been allowed to guarantee multiple units with the same sources of income and asset requirements. Now, therefore, be it resolved, December 12, 2017, that the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby introduces amendments to financial qualifications policy, including the minimum income requirement for prospective shareholders and transferees is increased from 36,000 36, to 40,000, and the ability to qualify in United, United with the guarantor is eliminated. Resolve further that staff is hereby directed to disseminate this information to the realty community serving Laguna Woods Village. And resolve further that resolution 0117-134 is hereby superseded and canceled, and resolved that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. I move this resolution. Do I have a second? Steve. <clears throat> All right, is there any discussion on this? Cash? Uh, I would like to committee to reconsider uh, the resol resolved and the ability to qualify in United with guarantor is eliminated. That is not fair because some of the people who come in uh, need guarantors. 
And if they need guarantors, we are saying we will not allow that. that that's not fair. All right, as chair, I would like to Said defer to <coughs> Director Leonard, who has done extensive research on this. You have in your packet statistics and facts and charts that show why, first of all, the Governing Documents Committee and then the Finance Committee both endorse this proposal. Steve. If I may, um, I handed out new charts as the one that was in the packet was a preliminary and had a misstatement in one of the numbers in 2016. If you look at what's titled page four, this goes back from 2002 to 2017. And what you see on the top green line is the number of annual sales within United on an annual basis. I'm repeating myself, annual. <laughs> um, the bottom red line is the net annual increase in guarantors. So for example, if you go to 2017, what you do not see on this chart is that there were 42 applications for guarantors, but there were four resales where guarantors were removed. So if you subtract the four from the 42, you end up with 38 new net guarantors. So that's the red line at the bottom. The purple line with the large numbers is the cumulative number of guarantors as you move forward in time. There was no data provided um, prior to 2002, so there certainly were more than five manors that had guarantors in 2002. We just don't know what that number was. But what this shows um, that basically since 2012 to 2017, in the last five years, the number of guarantors has doubled. So this is something that is ever increasing. And that's one of the reasons for the concern by many on the board that new shareholders and members coming into the community need to be more financially qualified than in the past. The other thing, the page five chart that you have in front of you also is a recapitulation of sale prices in our mutual from 2002 to present. And <clears throat> you'll see from 2002 that our median price for, for a manor was $129,558. And that nearly doubled uh, within a few years up to 2005 when it peaked at 236 and change. Interestingly to me, as the market continued to advance in price outside of this community, Prices actually fell in United in 2006 and 2007 before the crash that occurred nationwide. And I find that remarkable because that did not occur in other communities, surrounding communities. Um, we bottomed back out in 2011 and 2012 when prices again fell down to the 120 to 118,000 range. Now, we're on a steady climb to our median price of 254,000 and change. The red line that you see is a three-year moving average. The blue line is a five-year moving average. And the purple line is a seven-year moving average. So this is data for your consideration. And this is a, a primary source of what was considered through governing docs and finance in coming to this determination. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Manuel. Yes, uh, I, I'm opposed to uh, this proposal to uh, change the financial qualification policies, not only because of the change in the guarantors, but more, I'm more concerned with the fact that you deleted the uh, clause that allowed an existing manor owner 
to not need to qualify if he replaces that with another unit. That's been deleted. In addition to that, you've increased the income requirements. <coughs> that means that somebody could have qualified originally. They could sell their unit, and all of a sudden now, because he has to requalify, now he's got to requalify at a much higher income level. That, he that's, could, that's not the fact. Well, that's what that was that's not how it reads. That was not taken out. It says deleted <coughs> right here, and the income requirement was increased. That's what I'm looking at on page uh, 407. I hope you're right. Yeah. No, we did not. Uh, we did not delete that. Okay. Then this should pass <clears throat> what is stated. Okay. Uh, once you are a member, as long as if you upgrade by another unit, uh, okay, downgrade, that's, that's whatever, not passive, then. you are you are still qualified. Grandfather there. Grandfather. This is an error. Big error. Okay. You would have passed. How about the income requirement of forty thousand a year? Is that an error? No, 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 no. Okay, well, let's but correct this. But we left this. the assets in at the same time. Okay, let's correct this resolution, there. then. We can't pass it the way it is. What we need to look at is the policy and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. He's on page four of seven for 14A. The little box over to the side that says uh, deleted. That it's, not, is, it's not in the language either. Yeah. If you compare it to the other one, you'll see the language is in the other. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was not. It just proves you got to read all of these things. That's correct. Yes, you Every do. Every single line. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was not what was deleted by either of the committees. Shareholders at the top of page six of seven. Mm-hmm. To purchase a replacement unit do not have to requalify. No, it was just put in a different place, Manny. Where? If you well, look at page six. Page, page six, six, of, six seven, of seven, top paragraph. Right. It's not in the resolution itself. The resolution stands Doesn't as it is say. because it reflects to the policy. And right. the policy, page six of seven, the top. Uh, shareholders not having to requalify was just moved from page four over to page six. Cash? Uh, these are great figures, Steve. I, I like your approach, but what you're missing is out of 432 sales, 296, or more than three quarters, almost three quarters, were by guarantors. That's what this chart shows. No, Total I thought guarantors. I explained that pretty clearly, Cash. No, it doesn't. 96. <coughs> no. The red number at the bottom, 38, is the number of guarantors this year for 432 sales. That's the annual increase from last year of guarantors. The 296 is the cumulative number of guarantors for the period of 2002 through 2017. Oh. Okay. That's a cumulative number, not 297 guarantors out of 432 sales. We had, as I said, 42 guarantors on 432 sales. Okay. So you're closing the door for these 38 people henceforth. That is the resolution. Going forward. It has nothing Going to do forward. with these 38. It has nothing to do with the people already in place. Prospective members only. This this was discussed and recommended in governing documents. And it finance. was discussed and recommended in the finance committee. And now it's being brought to the board for a vote. If you disagree with the policy, you are free to vote against it. Right. And we did also make one change to the policy. If you go back to page one of seven of the finance, the staff report. It's not the policy, but the staff report. Uh, and go down under discussion, the last two sentences. Uh, the 217 where it generates actually guaranteed, it says 50% of the units sold, it's 10%. Right. It's not 50. That's an incorrect number. More than 2016. Right. Yes, Andre. Uh, I would like to say this is against the bylaw. 
the bylaw section, uh, in the definition section, Article 2, Section 4 definitions state that uh, there is a guarantee, the definition of guarantor. So there is, the guarantor is recognized in our bylaw. And in Article 3, membership person permitted to occupy units. Section 1, who may be a member. In the second paragraph, in the event the person or persons seeking to become a member are unable to satisfy the established financial requirement, the corporation may, but is not uh, obligated to approve the person for membership if a guarantor enters into an agreement provided by the corporation to become financially responsible for the expenses associated with such membership and that guarantor meets the financial requirements established by the corporation from time to time. So at this point, if we approve that, this uh, resolution, we are eliminating the possibility of guarantor completely from this bylaw. If that's the case, we need to get at least 50% of the resident to vote for this one. The mutual has the right and responsibility through resolutions and they are also uh, governing documents to make any changes that they feel is necessary uh, to the qualifications. And we've had a number of different things over the years. Uh, the bylaws also say that the uh, corporation, the man <clears throat> mutual, has the responsibility of updating those things where it's needed. So I totally agree with that. Okay, but if it's a bylaw trumps or any resolution. So if it's against bylaw, we have to change bylaw. Okay. Which bylaws are you reading from? The previously one? The, the Amended previous, and or? restated bylaw, August 2nd, 2017. What section? Section. We didn't do bylaws in two seconds. Mm -hmm. be section August. three. Uh, Article <coughs> three, section one. Second paragraph. All right. Point taken, and we will uh, have to go back and ask for a vote to change a bylaw if this pa resolution passes. <clears throat> I have. Uh, oh, sorry, mm -hmm. we cannot pass this resolution until bylaw changes. No, uh, I don't think we need to change the bylaws. We've done four. We've, we've changed done the qualifications. Yes. Yeah. We are representing the. Uh, right, Dick. May be helpful if you seek legal advice. Right. Yes, our attorney will be there this afternoon. So, uh, I'm going to table this motion. 14A, uh, until we speak to our attorney this afternoon. All right, uh, let's go to uh, 14B. Maggie, if you would <clears throat> please read that motion. I'm, I'm sorry, one hand, if I may. Uh, if, when are we going to table this until? Table it until our next meeting. Right. I would... It has to be done in open, open yeah. session. So, so, so as we did last month, since our attorney will be present in closed session today, if we get a determination from our attorney that we can proceed with this, I'd like to make a motion that we reconvene the open session at the end of closed session so that we can take a vote on this. <clears throat> second that. Yeah. All right. Sense. All right. We will do that. We've done that. Do you want to take a vote on the motion? <clears throat> I'll take a motion, a, a vote on his motion <clears throat> that we... Uh, explore this in closed session and uh, then reconvene in open session to have a, a vote. And again, this is new business. It's 30 days Correct. going forward. It's not a final vote mm -hmm. this time. That's the whole process that we have. When we have new business and we have a first reading, there are often changes, revisions to language, whatever. Uh, in this case, legal review, <coughs> before we bring it back in January for a final vote. So all we have to do is uh, say that we're going to move forward 
uh, with looking at it and going under review for both members and legal counsel. Maggie? I believe we can vote on it now and say subject to, we will continue the discussion, of course, in 30 days and we will be subject to the advice of our attorney. Yeah, because this is not a final vote. <clears throat> this just gets it on the table. All right, Cash? The resolution has already been sta uh, tabled, so there's no reason no, to open it up. No, I didn't have a vote this to table. This is first reading. There was no vote. There was no vote. We never voted. OK, can I make a motion then? <clears throat> we already have a motion. We already have a motion on the floor. Have a second. Do you want me to move my motion so that we can just vote on the draft? I'll be happy to just move the All motion. right, and second. All right. Uh, so basically, we vote on this motion. Oh, excuse me. Barbara, you may speak. <clears throat> I just had a suggestion that you take a vote now, today, Pending the legal opinion mm -hmm. of your attorney this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Very simple, and you right. do not have to postpone this for 30 days. Right. right. What we vote on now is just to put it on our radar, on our agenda, to vote on at our next meeting. Right. It right. is not approving or disapproving it finally. Yes, Andre. I would, I would like to see it get postponed till next open uh, meeting. So. If and residents can and chime in and talk about these issues and uh, provide input, more input. Well, that's, to this, that's uh, what's happening. If we yes. vote to put it on our agenda for January, that's what we're voting on now. Are we going to consider it in January for a final vote? Right. That gives residents 30 days. That gives us time to talk to our legal counsel. We are not approving or disapproving that at this meeting. It is a first reading only. Right. So I would call for the vote yes. to entertain a motion to introduce this resolution at our January meeting. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Say that again, sorry. The motion is to put it on our agenda for our January meeting. And we're not going to vote for uh, We are not voting for or against it at this time. Okay. It's like we usually do. This so you're introducing it just we're like We're introducing it right. yes. today. Okay. okay. In order to put it and on our the, agenda right. for our January uh, meeting uh, under right. old right. business, As okay. usual. we have to move it forward. And that's what we're doing. So are there any opposed? All right. Unanimous to move it forward. Uh, <clears throat> 14B, this is to introduce, again, this is the first reading, and it would not be passed. This is to put it on our agenda in January. Uh, a resolution establishing an anti-discrimination policy. And if you, Madam Secretary, would you read that resolution, please? And I'm yes. sorry, it's all Madam Chair, yes. I just wanted to remind uh, the board that you don't have 30 days between now and your next meeting, and so... <laughs> So the community will have almost 60 days. That's to right. Or this. February. <laughs> I, I, you're right. I think okay. Didn't count. Right. Uh, resolution 0117XX anti discrimination <coughs> policy. Whereas United Laguna Woods Mutual United is a nonprofit mutual benefit corporation existing under and by virtue of the laws of the state of California organized for the purpose of providing its members with senior housing on a cooperative, nonprofit basis, pursuant to the provisions set forth in this occupancy agreement, articles of incorporation and bylaws, whereas United, through its volunteer board of directors, is responsible for management, maintenance, and administration of a residential stock cooperative common interest development under United's governing documents, which include without limitation the occupancy agreement articles of incorporation, bylaws, operating rules, and board resolutions, which grant United the authority to manage and govern the affairs of the properties within United and all applicable law. Whereas California Civil Code Section 47060A2 provides in part that a member may modify his or her separate interests at his or her expense to facilitate access for persons who are blind, visually handicapped, deaf, or physically disabled, 
or to alter conditions which could be hazardous to those persons. These modification myths may also include modifications of the route from the public way to the door of the separate interest. Whereas federal law prohibits discrimination in housing based on race, color, religion, sex, national origin, familial status, and disability. Whereas federal law also provides that discrimination includes a refusal to permit at the expense of the handicapped person, reasonable modifications of existing premises occupied or to be occupied by such person, if such modifications may be necessary to afford such person's full enjoyment of the premises. Whereas California law prohibits the owner of any housing accommodation to discriminate against or harass any person <coughs> because of race, color, religion, <coughs> sex, gender identity, gender expression, sexual orientation, marital status, national origin, ancestry, familial status, source of income, disability, or genetic information of that person. Whereas California law also prohibits the owner of any housing accommodation to make or to cause to be made any written or oral inquiry concerning the race, color, religion, sex, gender, gender identity, gender expression, sexual orientation, marital status, national origin, ancestry, familial status, disability, or genetic information of any person seeking to purchase, rent, or lease any housing accommodations any person to make, print, or publish, or cause to be made, printed, or published any notice, statement, or advertisement with respect to the sale or rental of a housing accommodation that indicates any preference with respect to any preference limitation or discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, gender, gender identity, gender expression, sexual orientation, marital status, national origin, ancestry, familial status, source of income, disability or genetic information, or an intention to make that preference, limitation, or discrimination, and to otherwise make unavailable or deny a dwelling based on discrimination because of race, color, religion, sex, gender identity, gender expression, sexual orientation, familial status, source of income, disability, genetic information, or national origin. Whereas Article 3 of the Articles of Incorporation provides that United shall have and exercise any and all powers and rights and privileges which a corporation organized under the Nonprofit Mutual Benefit Corporation Law may now or hereafter have or exercise. Whereas Sections 1 and 2 of the bylaws provided that United has the express power and duty to manage, maintain, preserve, and administer the business of the development and to promote the health, safety, and welfare of the de residents within the development. Whereas the Board has the power to adopt, amend, or repeal in its discretion rules and regulations not inconsistent with the provisions of the do governing documents respectively, and whereas United desires to strengthen, clarify, and confirm its anti-discrimination policy pursuant to applicable law, now therefore be it resolved December 19, 2017, that the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby introduces the anti-discrimination policy and resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. I move this resolution. Do I have a second? second. All right. <clears throat> Any discussion? Yes. I have, um, a, I have a correction. That thanks. should be December 12th, I believe, not 19th. The last result. Yeah, now therefore be resolved December 12, 2017. We can make that correction in the minutes. Right, thank you. Thank you. Question. Yes? Uh, 
couple questions for you. What, what does familial status mean? What part brother, of your family are you a brother, mother, father, sister, aunt? One, one, two, three, four, five, six. <coughs> six uh, or, mm, you know, the, the sixth one. I've seen <coughs> it. Starting from the sixth one, familial. Oh, family status. Yes. Family oh, status. Family. Okay, that's Familial. Okay. Yes. Okay, this verbiage is taken word for word from right. the state law. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Family we status. are just making it part okay. of our. The the last line on the page four or five says source of income. Does that mean we cannot require them to tell? We cannot require them to have source of income only in the United States. No, it does not. Mm -mm. So no. the source of income means that they have to, but that doesn't cover that we require them, their, their source of income and the financial situation have, in the United States. We have our own financial requirements, right. and they specifically specify that <coughs> the source of income has to be uh, U.S. and the assets as well have to right. be in the U.S. But here, the, this, it says if you question a source mm. of income, then it's a discrimination. No, it's not, and that's again. You will. I'll let Jeff explain it to you this afternoon. But that's not what it means. What it means with source of income is that we can't uh, say that you can't use Social Security, or you have to have. Uh, 401k or wages or whatever. So there are certain limitations to it, but that does not mean that we cannot set our requirements for our village on where the income can come from. Okay. All right, uh, <coughs> Raisa. Uh, does disability in being able to express your thoughts in English uh, are considered as disability? No, it's no. not. Hmm? No. no, no. Language is not considered a disability under the state law. We have to check with the lawyer. <clears throat> All right. Uh, uh, may so I have question. Andre? A second. Who determines whether it's a discrimination or not? The board. When we have the packages that we uh, approve or disapprove. Okay. It comes in the resale packages, and we decide whether it meets any of these criteria. And if it, there's an appeal, it comes back to the board, and we get legal counsel. You're talking about the resale situation. I'm talking about the non-resale situation. Who determines whether it's uh, discrimination or not? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't understand. Uh, this discrimination... Okay. Maggie, maybe you can clear that up as an attorney. This does not determine, determine what is discrimination. Legal action in the court will determine if there has been discrimination. This simply says we have this policy that we will follow. So if we want to follow this policy, we should vote on this. And if someone says, you are discriminating, they allege that, they charge us with that, then it's a legal process. The, 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 the resolution that we have has to be general. We cannot be specific right. any more than what state law gives us, but we can't define each of the different right. things under that. So uh, this anti-discrimination policy was written by our attorney uh, all of the galleries, and most of it was quoted from state law that they said we just needed to have on our books. So okay. I'd like to call for the vote. It was <clears throat> a motion made by Maggie and uh, seconded by Steve that we move this resolution on to our next meeting. All those in favor? Okay, unanimous. All right, C is the different one. It does not require 30 days. And if you will look in your packet, uh, the cover sheet uh, from our finance committee, we've had numerous requests from different members saying, do we have earthquake insurance, which we have not. The decision has been made by former boards that the uh, cost was too great and the return on investment not enough for us to do it. 
Uh, we <clears throat> things have changed. Uh, we had a presentation at the finance committee meeting where they came in and gave us, again, all of the information that's in your packet uh, <clears throat> on earthquake insurance, and it was recommended by the finance committee uh, that we do uh, take the suggested uh, uh, earthquake insurance at a cost of approximately $130,000 a year. Uh, we accepted option number one. There were three options given. Um, <clears throat> would you read that resolution, please? Uh, resolution 0117. Whereas on September 26, 2017, the United Finance Committee asked to obtain a quotation for earthquake coverage and whereas a presentation was made by the broker for difference in conditions, earthquake insurance quotes to the United Finance Committee on November 28, 2017, which included catastrophe model modeling to help assist in the review of exposures, and whereas the Finance Committee recommends purchase of an earthquake insurance policy with a coverage of $10 million and a 5 percent deductible. Now therefore be it resolved December 12, 2017 that the Board of Directors hereby accepts the quotation for earthquake insurance and directs staff to bind coverage for a policy period of December 15, 2017 to December 15, 2018 at a cost not to exceed $130,000 authorized as an unbudgeted operating expenditure and resolve further that the officers and ed agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. I move this resolution. Do I have a second? Uh, I'd like to uh, add some language to the... Uh, uh, we have to have a second first and then we can get okay. your uh, I'll second discussion. It. Okay. <clears throat> now, all right, what language would you like to uh, uh, add where, to this Where it says, and direct staff to bind coverage, <coughs> I would like to add the additional language as described and quoted in option number one by Empire Indemnity Insurance Company and General Security Indemnity Company of Arizona. So we're real specific which type of policy we're getting. Right now, it doesn't signify that it's that coverage that we're going to get. All right, okay. Cheryl, did you get that? Can you add that to the resolution? Did all of you understand that? Yeah, we're that's right. Where, where the coverage is coming from. And then the from. names of the insurance companies. <coughs> that would be in the third whereas, or where do you want it? In the now therefore it be resolved? Yes, yes. Okay. Right after to bind coverage, as described and quoted in option one, by Empire Indemnity Insurance Company and General Security Indemnity Company of Arizona. It's real okay. specific which coverage we're after. Okay. All right. Cash? Uh, I would like to add one more whereas that states that this is strictly for the United Mutual Property and not the contents of the dwelling oh, we, it, because some people may misunderstand it <clears throat> and not take insurance coverage for themselves. <clears throat> All right, um, Maggie. I am willing, eager, and ever ready to publicize that information, and I do have a question and quote on it today. So I'd like to leave it out of here and just let communications handle that publicity as best we can, if that's okay with you, rather than make it part of our policy. And we don't require earthquake insurance from any of our residents, just as we don't require fire insurance or uh, loss of use or any other uh, homeowners association. We've been told we can't require that. Right. That all we can do is make recommendations for yes. the mutual property. Uh, we are the, <clears throat> uh, both GRF and Third have this same type of policy, and so uh, we felt that at United we needed to do this broad sweep. I understand your concern, and I think as we go forward and talk about this, we should make that point, but I, I don't feel it should be a part of the resolution itself. 
All right, I'll call for <clears throat> the vote. Uh, it's been motioned by Manuel, seconded by Maggie. Pre Madam President, we have yes. one request to speak before the vote. Okay. okay. All right. Maxine McIntosh. My question was answered. Thank all right. You. All right. Uh, all those in favor of this resolution, please raise your hand. It's unanimous. Slowly but surely, we're getting through this. All right. Uh, <clears throat> 14D, uh, I will entertain a motion to adopt revisions to United Mutual Standard 43 bathroom splits. Again, this does require 30 days to comply. This would be a vote just to put it on our next meetings, which would be February's agenda. Uh, this is, again, an effort by our alterations department to beef up the standards. We did the one on windows today. This one is bathroom splits. They're looking at other things that we can make standard to make it easier for our residents to uh, make alterations within their manner. So uh, would you read that resolution, please? Resolution 0117XX, section 43 bathroom splits. Whereas the Architectural Controls and Standards Committee recognizes the need to amend alteration standards and create new alteration standards as necessary. Whereas the Architectural Controls and Standards Committee has reviewed numerous variance requests to remodel bathrooms, specifically to create a second bathroom in the footprint of the original bathroom. This type of alteration is commonly referred to as a bathroom split. And whereas the Architectural Control and Standards Committee recognizes the need to create the new standard for these alterations, eliminating the need for members to apply for a variance request for a common alteration, now, therefore, be it resolved December 12, 2017, that the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby introduces the following standard, Section 43 of the Alteration Standards for Bathroom Splits. I don't think we need to read all of the uh, <coughs> uh, Section 43. Uh, if people are interested, it is online and it will be available. What we are interested in today is just the motion. Reserve follow that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. So again, did you move it? I move it. I move the resolution. Okay, and seconded by Janie. And again, this is just to put it on our uh, agenda for our February meeting. Yes, Cash. Uh, with the little experience I got working on the architecture committee, we have so many different types of sewer lines, making this as a standard and eliminate, looking at every one makes it difficult to swallow for me. This resolution will make it so that <clears throat> part of the uh, conversion that will take place with new uh, investors and flippers coming in, uh, they will give them an open ticket so that the next occupant becomes, takes the headache. I think this re resolution should be withdrawn. Well, did you, did you read all of the... Yes. Uh, there because 2.5 and 2.6 and 7 covered that. Steve, you had a comment? Um, I just wanted to confirm with Director Durrell that... Uh, the standing requirement now for all sewer lines to be cameraed any time that there's right. a change in plumbing will continue with this? Yes, and that's a very successful program, <coughs> working very well. The cost approximately is about $200. So the lines will continue to be cameraed, even though this Absolutely. will be a standard? Absolutely, yes. Thank you. And the architectural and engineering plan, including the plumbing plans, still uh, have to be submitted to the alteration department for approval, uh, and the apart they will uh, go through that uh, procedure with the cameras, et cetera. All right, I have a motion what? by, <clears throat> yes, Andre. 
I think uh, uh, the question, Cash's question, is not about what needs, what uh, been done, or what supposed to be. Uh, it's about the quality of the work being done. Whether how do we ensure that they satisfy the quality of uh, problems? And I understand Cash had a very bad experience with uh, remodelers and causing him a lot of trouble in that. So I think that's the concern about the quality, not about uh, uh, state of the permit alteration, that type of thing. Janie. The city requires that they have inspectors through the permit, and they do have a rough electrical and a rough plumbing inspection that is required. As a rebuttal, can I say something? Yes, Cash. As a rebuttal to that, I came across one lady who purchased a unit, fully done, for over $400,000, 460 plus, and she has all kinds of plumbing problems. Now, things like that can happen, and just we can't depend on just city inspector, but we have to look at each one. All right, what we're talking making, about here, Cash, is alterations. Yes. We're not talking about resales. When you buy a unit, you buy it as is, and you are supposed to have the inspection and know what it is that you buy, and we are not responsible no, for I that. No, I understand that. What I'm talking about is the city inspection that is done for that particular unit. This poor lady is still suffering uh, almost okay. a year well, down the road. That's the that's issue, not ours. No, that, the, that, that will happen. That will create... If we put such kind of resolution uh, to allow, you know, new investors to come in and do work and depend on city uh, inspection. And we depend on our architectural, our uh, alterations department, too. We have to trust our staff. Janie? They have plumbing uh, plans that are, have to be approved not just by our department, but also by the city. And, and I, I'm sorry about this woman, but I don't know when those alterations were done, what the uh, process was. They may have been done without a permit. We have a lot of that going on. People go for a low bid somewhere outside and do not go through our process, do not go through our uh, alterations department, and do not get a permit. And without having further information on that specific thing, I can only say the unit was bought that way. <clears throat> Uh, the sharehold was bought that way with the uh, right to occupy. And any alterations are not our concern anyway. <coughs> so, uh, I, yes, Raisa. Uh, as I pointed out in this thing, we cannot have plumbing plans that you're talking about because we don't have any basis to make any plans. I have brought this up several times. We need to put this in CAD and so that they can modify it. I, I understand what you have brought up a couple of times, and I only, again, give you to 2.5, that detailed architectural engineering plans, including plumbing pans for all piping, have to be submitted. And if we don't have good plans to compare them to, then we have to go with what's submitted by them. They cannot be submitted because we don't have a base. Yeah, there are, there are, uh, Contractor architect or architect can do that. Yes, Steve. Question for Director Terrell. First Vice President Terrell. Um, is my understanding correct that we previously had bathroom splits that were already approved as normal? Some of the bath bathroom splits have been approved. And Previously, it, as, as yes, standing alteration, it, yes, and this is an extension. So it's of very the similar policy. to what we're doing with the windows. Right. We're making it standard Enforces to it. save <clears throat> staff time and the member time. And a lot of this has been discussed within our committee, and we're working on uh, Reese's concern. Thank you. All right, I'll call for the vote. We have <clears throat> a motion by Maggie uh, that's seconded by Janie to move the resolution to adopt the mutual standard 43 bathroom splits to our February meeting. All those in favor? 
Any opposed? Two. All right. Motion passes. It will go to February. All right. Now we come to committee reports. <clears throat> and I've said this a number of times, but I always have to reiterate. This is what we feel is so important for you, the residents, to know what are we doing. We don't just come here once a month and look at a bunch of paper. We work very diligently all the time in committees, and <clears throat> you're going to first hear what the United Committees have been doing. When their next meeting is, if you have something that you want to add, if you have a question you want to, to do through that 30-day notification, please take note of that, although the calendars are published. And <clears throat> then we will do the GRF committees, which as we specified, we have two members on every GRF committee. So let's start with the Finance <clears throat> Committee and the Financial Report by Director Morrison. Okay, slide one, please. Is your microphone on? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Slide one. Okay, it's there. Yeah, they've right, got it. Thank you. We don't see it, but it's on their screen. Okay, the total revenue for United through October 31st of 2017 was $32,724,000 compared to expenses of $30,337,000 resulting in net revenue of $2,387,000. Slide two. Uh, through October, United Mutual was better than budget by 3,316,000, primarily due to a late start and fewer expenditures in the reserve programs, uh, such as Wasteline Replacements Program, in which work started in late May, building structures, which had fewer replacements, water lines, program replaced, uh, that was placed on hold by the board, and countertops had fewer replacements. The favorable variance in these programs was partially offset by an unfavorable variance in compensation and related expenses. In addition, Resolution 01-17-25 approved unbudgeted expenses of 375,000 in the Landscape Department to complete the tree trimming cycle in 2017. All United scheduled tree work was completed by July. Staff anticipates minimal off schedule tree work for the remainder of the year. Slide three, please. On the pie chart, we show non assessment revenues received to date of a million twenty two thousand by category, starting with our largest revenue generating category, interest income, followed by laundry revenue and the resale processing fees. Slide four, please. On this pie chart, we see expenses to date of over $30 million, showing that our largest categories of expense for are, are for compensation, property taxes, followed by utilities and outside services. Slide five, please. The reserve balances on October 31st, 2017 were 22.9 million. Year-to-date contributions and interest to reserves were $10,217,000, and year-to-date expenditures were $7,712,000. Um, our monthly resale report, we were actually, uh, our sales were down from a year ago um, this month. Uh, 44 units to 39 units, so we were down eight units um, at a sales volume of 1515000 However, the average sales price was up 11.1% or $13,393 per unit. Our delinquencies as of November 30th um, Prior month, we had 28, we went down to 23. <coughs> However, we went from 75,000 uh, to 76,000, or a difference of $1,381, which we're in very good shape with delinquencies. Um, we discussed waistline remediation 
and we are going to push forward to increase the ex, uh, expediency of repair. Uh, GRF did not meet, oh, I'm sorry, GRF, this is, I got to go to the restroom too, so in case you miss me for GRF, <laughs> we did not have a meeting in November. All right. <clears throat> uh, your next meeting is January 30th, 2018. Yes. 2 p.m. in the Sycamore Room. Okay, just, just, uh, a, just a slight <laughs> bit of clarification. Yes. Uh, member presented uh, Andre Torn uh, on November meeting, so I am a member of the finance committee, right? Yes, you are. Okay, okay, just confirm. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, <clears throat> B, the report of the Architectural Control and Standards Committee, Director Durrell. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Our committee discussed eight alteration requests, which included requests for, for master bedroom closet relocation, remodeling of an enclosed atrium, no. bathroom Do additions, which were also bathroom splits. We did have one denial, and it was an appeal to retain an unapproved pergola in the front patio. Common area and attics was discussed. Attic space in your common area is, cons is considered non-usable for exceptions. You may have skylights or a, a, a tube light. You cannot have in your attic space, use that for storage, your hot water heater, or any air conditioning equipment. We discussed standards for both bathroom splits and standardizing the window alterations, which we've already discussed here. Our next meeting will be December 19th at 9.30 in the Sycamore Room of the Community Center. Thank that you. concludes my report. <clears throat> All right, uh, third report is from the Communications Committee, Director Blackwell. Please be aware that United Directors are on this day regularly, several times a month. You could, Friday. Every Friday, this day you can watch on TV6 or on YouTube anytime at your leisure. Select the director or topic you want. The breeze issues in December and January will be holiday fair uh, with a special notation from United urging residents to be good neighbors who are considerate and careful in taking steps to keep United safe and quiet. Now, on you, you received a package in an envelope like this sometime last month. And I will read a page of it. All of the pages you should read. Every resident should read all of these pages. This one says, on page 10, the insurance carried by United Mutual and GRF does not cover your personal liability or items that are your personal responsibility, such as additions and alterations, personal property, or loss of use. Members should purchase condominium owner's HO6 insurance policy to protect against unexpected expense in the event a loss occurs. This is also a requirement for many lenders Please remind tenants and lessees that they should purchase renter's insurance for their personal liability, personal property, and loss of use. For your peace of mind and our good planning, United is currently purchasing earthquake insurance. Every owner should have their own possessions and alterations protected by this H06 homeowner policy and you can have earthquake insurance additionally. In the past few months, several insurers have come up with offers which will be useful for co-op residents. Also, if you have a lower storage cabinet in your carport, be sure it is covered by your insurance as it is not connected to your dwelling. Be sure it is covered, uh, especially if you are storing some kind of valuables or irreplaceables. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. 
And we appreciate particularly all that uh, Director Blackwell does for our breeze. She's our main conduit into the breeze. <clears throat> all right, uh, D is the executive hearings report. Uh, we had a meeting last Thursday, lasted from 9 in the morning till 4.30 in the afternoon. There are basically three types of things that are held at these executive hearings. First of all, we have damage restoration. Uh, when damage is done to a unit and is uh, taken care of by the mutual, if it's to an alteration, uh, then the resident is billed. And that's uh, part of this. And if it is, of course, mutual property and something that we repair, then they do not get a bill. Uh, the second type is disciplinary hearings. <clears throat> and in the disciplinary hearings uh, this time, we had less abandoned vehicles, alteration maintenance, carport clutter, common area clutter, nuisance violations, but we had more landscape violations and still going up every month, illegal occupants. It's very important that people understand that they cannot just ask somebody to come live in their unit. And <clears throat> I hope I'm not gonna be treading on too many toes to say one of the problems that was brought forth at this meeting is we have churches in the area who ask their members to take in homeless people because they're hard on, down on their luck, don't have a place to live, what kind of things. We don't allow that. You cannot do that and just have invite somebody to come live with you. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a problem and we're, we're trying to address it in many different ways. That's so, <clears throat> that was not part of this. We'll talk about that later. Uh, so, our next <clears throat> executive hearings will be January 25th, 2018. Uh, we'll go on to the report of the Governing Documents Committee. And <clears throat> uh, our next meeting is coming up January 22nd. And in the Governing Documents Committee, some of the things that you saw today uh, on the agenda came through there. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. We basically have been looking at uh, the financial ones. We've reviewed the log from resident services. Uh, we had a review report on guarantors, which you saw today with a lot of research done by Director Leonard. Uh, the minimum income requirement was brought to us by Director Tibbetts, and we did a lot of research uh, <clears throat> in between asking people and getting statistics from the state, getting statistics from the county, all of those kinds of things, and looking at the fact that um, what third requires as well as what we require in United, which is lower. Uh, <clears throat> Property services reported to us that 75% of residents pay all cash when they buy their share and exclusive right to live in their unit. There are very few that are financed. When they're financed, it is a loan. We do not have mortgages. Mortgages are on real property. If you have a loan, be from NCB, National Cooperative Bank, it is a loan. And that's why you can't get a reverse mortgage here in United for a co-op, because you don't have a mortgage in the first place. Uh, <clears throat> some of the things that we're looking at uh, are we're reviewing and making recommendations to the sublease policy. There has been a task force made up of staff to report back to uh, governing documents bringing those up to date and making sure they're in sync with our bylaws. And uh, we talked about the anti-discrimination policy. We made some suggestions and then turned it back to legal counsel for what you saw today. And <clears throat> future agenda items for our meeting coming up on January 22nd, if any of you are interested, uh, is again the updated resale documents a review of communication piece for residents regarding trusts. A lot of people do not understand trusts. 
They think of it strictly as a, uh, a way of estate planning. That's not what a trust is set up to do, basically. We have rules and regulations on trusts. We are getting more and more and more people putting the stock that they own in United into a trust. Uh, we're also going to review and discuss the election guidelines. So again, our next meeting is January 22nd. <clears throat> All right, uh, now a report from the Landscape Committee. Again, doc, uh, Director Blackwell. We met on October <clears throat> 11th. We had many persons in attendance all of whom, many of whom trekked out to view one set of trees. Uh, Bruce Hartley stated that he has three <laughs> areas of emphasis moving forward. He's focusing on addressing complaints, completing promises made, and looking at maintenance practices. The village has the same level of staffing throughout season changes. Bruce asks for patience while staff gets back on track. His goals are to build confidence with residents and improve customer service. We have a turf removal project and irrigation retrofit is very near completion. I think there's almost nothing left to be done. A resident should be aware that not all trees are trimmed at the same time. Uh, a, a tree crew may come through your cul-de-sac. They are on a three-year program for the trees. Uh, not all, some trees are trimmed every year. Some trees are trimmed every other year. And some trees are trimmed every third year. So don't say, they missed those seven trees over there. They, they look at them and said, oh, those are on next year's. So th they will not be touching every tree. They will look at it, of course. They, they look at it as they pass, but they know that's next year. So do not expect them to be trimming every tree every year. Um, United has a puzzling situation where some residents are animal lovers and wildlife lovers. And when we put out a rabbit trap, loaded with delicacies for such varmints. The neighbors who love these little fuzzy critters, so they think, toss the food away, close the trap, and sometimes even throw the traps into the bushes. Now I ask you, how many times should our crew go out and replace and reload this trap? It's a very <coughs> debilitating activity that our nature-loving friends engage in, and we'd ask them not to do that, but we ask for those who are asking for the traps to not say that, oh, the mowers did that, or oh, the guy didn't do that with the trap. Every employee knows precisely what to do with a trap. No one would ever throw a trap into the bushes or take the food out of it. So this is a dilemma that goes on when we have differing interests in the village. And we ask, if you have difficulty with rabbits, that you be patient. I don't know what we'll do about it, but we'll figure out a way to get around this. Or maybe you should just speak to your neighbors and ask them about it. They will not admit it, of course. But, but we have these different interests. Uh, let's see, United Landscape is meeting here, this room, on Thursday at 9 o'clock. We are all having a, a little bit of information of, about the creek at that meeting, because indeed the creek is within the boundaries of United, although it has often been a GRF issue because the funding is through GRF. But anyway, we are listening to the creek issues and having a creek discussion that will be Thursday at 9 a.m. Thank you. Okay. Now we have a report from Maintenance and Construction, Director Tibbetts. Yeah, I'm sorry, so <coughs> I'll try to condense this a little bit. Um, over Thanksgiving weekend, we had 41 plumbing problems, as uh, uh, Brad said earlier, and um, almost all of those were due to plug up the sinks. Those lines 
over the years have decreased in size from two and three inches down to about one inch. And when you use the garbage disposal, run the water afterwards for 15, 20 seconds and it'll wash all that stuff down to the main sewer line. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, about 20 ongoing projects, as uh, Ernesto will say, and he will, uh, so I think I'll just let Ernesto continue from there. Right. Okay. Yeah, we had said we would have three directors, and our third one is Ernesto, who is <coughs> director of maintenance and construction, and he's going to give us a presentation of where we are right now. Thank you, Ernesto. Good morning. Good afternoon, Ma Madam Chair. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, directors. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to make this presentation to you. I'll be brief. I know it's getting, you've been here for a while, so I'll try to uh, run through this fairly quickly. I have three topics, really, that I want to discuss with you today. <clears throat> One will be uh, to give you a snapshot of where we're at relative to the accomplishments uh, that the Maintenance Operations Division uh, has, uh, and as it relates to not only United Mutual, but as it relates to the entire community. But I, I had thrown, I changed his presentation that I made at the VMS uh, board to add uh, some more uh, projects that we've completed in United for you so you have an idea of what, what the flavor of it is. <clears throat> uh, first, I want to give you a, a, a first eye view of what uh, we attempted to complete this year and what we actually completed. Uh, we uh, started with a $28 million uh, capital and program uh, funding for this year, of which uh, 11 million was uh, United's. Um, actually, more than was for United's. This figures that you're seeing here in this graph are actually what we were able to complete uh, this year in 2017. We started, as I mentioned, with about $28 million. Uh, we, so far, based on invoices received uh, and expenditures that we've compiled from our financial reports, we're about uh, $24 million. I anticipate that uh, as we close uh, the year, we'll probably be more in the $26 million range. So about 40%, 80% uh, complete, 85% complete on the total uh, budget that you gave us to complete this fiscal year. So that's uh, why I'd like to be able to report that we completed it at 100%. There's many challenges that we face as we move through this. So. But 85%, I think it's a, it's a, good, uh, it's a good number. Um, <clears throat> I'll give you a sampling of the projects that we were able to do for you uh, and the community as a whole. And I'll go through those fairly quickly. Uh, you can stop me if you have specific questions on anything. Garden centers one and two. Uh, uh, quite a bit of work was done at the garden centers. We completed aerial surveys. We reconfigured the plots based on the aerial <coughs> survey. Uh, to get more accuracy on the, on the dimensions that we had on paper. Uh, we also completed standards for the garden plot fences. We uh, added new gates, new fencing, relocated the, uh, the office at Garden Center 2, uh, moved a, a shade structure. So quite a number of improvements were completed at a cost of about $260,000. <coughs> The Clubhouse 5 uh, HVAC project, uh, this was uh, a project that essentially refurbished the entire uh, heat and ventilation and air conditioning system for this uh, uh, clubhouse. Uh, we uh, replaced 13 units with brand new units, and we changed the roof to a uh, PVC cool roof membrane. So uh, this will net uh, the community quite a bit of savings and energy, uh, and uh, in addition to the cool roof, uh, we also installed the energy management system. So uh, this uh, uh, ha almost half a million dollar job will, uh, will net some pretty significant savings for the community. Uh, you're all familiar with the fitness center that we completed downstairs. Uh, this, uh, as you remember, we demolished the first floor uh, meeting rooms and recreation and earthquake preparedness room to give uh, room for a 4,200 square foot fitness center. Uh, this uh, fitness center uh, provides, as you know, a, a personalized fitness experience. Uh, it has state-of-the-art equipment, and it's just a, a jewel uh, to the community center. This was the $362,000 expenditure. Uh, 
You may or may not be familiar with the Simulsat antenna. Uh, this project was all about uh, the quality of the signal that we delivered to the residents uh, on their TVs. We replaced the existing antenna and uh, with a new antenna that's closer to the broadband building, thereby uh, uh, reducing the amount of cabling that we have to do to get the signal from the satellites onto our system to be able to deliver it to the community. Um, this was a $283,000 uh, project, and uh, it uh, was completed uh, on schedule and on budget. Uh, third solar uh, project, this was uh, one of the largest projects that we completed uh, this year. Uh, it uh, consists of about uh, systems on 12 garden build buildings, and it, uh, the generation and the savings will cover about 90% of the energy used in the mutual common areas. Uh, this is uh, generating uh, 841 uh, kilowatts, and it was uh, completed at a cost of $2.5 uh, million. <clears throat> now, the largest project that, that we delivered this year was the United Solar. Uh, this project, uh, uh, again, will be generating about 800 uh, kilowatts of energy for, the, for United. Uh, it uh, was installed in a, at eight solar sites, uh, consisting of about uh, 30 uh, flat roof uh, carports. Uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, uh, unique project, and uh, it will uh, also in, include energy upgrades for 175 of our standalone uh, uh, laundry rooms, where we uh, replace water heaters for, with point-of-use heaters, and we also replaced it, replaced a total of 82 push matic panels that are no longer supported uh, uh, by the manufacturer with new panels. Uh, this was an investment by the mutual of about $3.8 million. We anticipate a, um, uh, an ROI of this of about 12 years. So great project uh, that will net significant savings for the mutual moving forward. Uh, the United Paving and uh, Seal Code project. Uh, this mm -hmm. is a project that is not as sexy as solar. However, it varies up. Your paving projects are very significant. And the reason for that is that community-wide, we have about 55 miles of uh, asphalt uh, roadways and alleys, of which 23 are uh, in United. Uh, this asset uh, is approximately worth about $70 million. And it's an asset that, when neglected, will come back and bite. Uh, you have to have a very uh, steady and accurate uh, maintenance program. We have an excellent maintenance program here in the community, as uh, you can see by the condition of the roadways and the alleys uh, that you have. Um, this was uh, this year. We overlaid about a, uh, a quarter of a mile, and uh, we slurry seal about two and a half. Uh, miles of uh, roadway. And also I wanted to add that this year the board uh, added $150,000 appropriation for uh, parkway uh, improvement, for concrete improvement as well. So beginning in 2018, you're going to see the concrete improvements be done concurrently with the paving. So we'll move in, we'll uh, identify concrete that needs to be replaced, get that replaced, and then follow it with a paving program so you'll end up with a complete brand new uh, railway or alley. United program, uh, uh, roofing program, this is a very important program for uh, the mutual. It's uh, $1.2 million. Uh, and this, uh, uh, this is driven by uh, the warranties on the roof that we replace. It consists primarily of the installation of uh, polyvinyl chloride or PVC uh, membranes on our roof that are called cool roofs uh, and which are, have a high reflectivity and reduce the cost of cooling the buildings. Uh, all of the, uh, this addresses the flat roof. Tile and, and uh, shingle uh, roofs have uh, all completed and I like, I'm happy to report that this uh, program is 100% complete at this time. Your fumigation program, uh, you know, this, this uh, as you know, with all of our structures here in the community are, are made out of wood elements, uh, unfortunately, uh, and due to poor detailing uh, when these things were constructed, uh, they, this uh, wood uh, me uh, members rot, 
Uh, and so this, this is a, a one of the steps that we take to prevent these bugs from eating through our budget. And uh, so you have, uh, this year you funded it at about $42,000. Uh, this is uh, in conjunction with your prior to pain program. Mm -hmm. You don't have a formal prior to pain program here because it's part of your, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, you don't have a formal dry rot program here because it's, made, it's part of and parcel of your prior to pain program. So uh, this, the prior to pain and the pain program are funded at about $2.1 million. And as you can see in this picture, this is very typical of details that, that of the units that were constructed in the past. You see a member, a wood member on the left-hand side that it was actually a wood member that's totally rotted that went into the structure. Uh, and you can see the detail on the other side. That wood member should never have been placed there without a cap, without some sort of flashing. So all of that is being corrected. Also, there's some architectural fissures, fissures in your manor that be, are being changed and removed to preclude uh, dry rot in the future. So uh, this program, I'd like to also point out that the, that the board uh, approved uh, an increase to the program. We went from uh, 834,000 to 982,000, an 18% increase because of the amount of dry rot that we're encountering and the fact that we want to be proactive with the dry rot that we encountered through the prior pain. Uh, this happened to be an, uh, a tree that fell at one of our uh, buildings as this was due to the, the storm brain, uh, storms that we experienced in December uh, last year. Uh, this was repaired and completed. Uh, this was at a total cost of about $12,000. Uh, you're all familiar with the uh, Pushomatic Panel Replacement Program. Uh, this, this program, uh, uh, we have essentially addressed about 251 of these panels uh, this year. Uh, we have a remaining of about 22,350 panels left in the mutual. Uh, so if you divide it out, we're looking at about nine years to complete the program. Uh, there is really no need to accelerate this. We're not having issues with them. Uh, they're obviously under capacity. And as we replace them with the new panels, with the uh, uh, Cutler Hammer uh, panels, actually we're increasing the capacity of those panels. Uh, we were able to uh, purchase the same, uh, for the same amount of dollars, a panel that is actually rated about 150 amps. While we're not using that amperage at this point, it allows to have the panel already ready to go when we do uh, make changes to the rest of the system to be able to provide 150 amps. Uh, common wall replacement in United, this particular one I, I was personally involved in. Uh, this is a very unusual situation. We had uh, uh, the, the dirt, uh, the poor drainage from this uh, manor uh, and the water from the storms dumped right adjacent to the wall. Hmm. Uh, the majority of the, of the dirt around this manor happen to have a high content of clay. Clay, when it's wet, swells, and when it dries, it shrinks <coughs> considerably. So that uh, caused this wall to rotate on these foundations, so we had to go out there and replace the entire wall. And last but not least, uh, this is uh, your uh, waistline remediation program. Uh, this program, uh, it's a one of you funded it at a one and a half million dollars, and essentially is to install epoxy uh, base liner onto your pipes. Uh, this is a very dramatic picture that you have here. Uh, essentially, we are dealing with two types of very problematic pipes that's out there. Uh, one is a cast iron pipe, which reduces its diameter as it corrodes, and the other one is clay pipe, which, due to root intrusion, uh, it reduces the diameter and the flow condition of the pipe uh, as it ages. These pipes are uh, approaching 50 years old, and by uh, epoxy lining them, you're essentially giving yourself another 50 or in excess of 50 years uh, of life for these pipes. Uh, it minimizes disruption to the residents because we can line them from the street. Um, and uh, again, fantastic program. Um, and that's a, a good segue 
uh, to talk a little bit, uh, my next item was to talk a little bit about the waistline programs, to kind of give you an update of where we're at and what essentially the program, uh, program consists at, of at this point. Uh, this program was actually instituted in 2006 uh, in both uh, mutuals, in Third and, and United. And however, work didn't really start happening on our pipes since, 2000, in, uh, since 2011. So uh, prior to that, no work was really done. Um, the unfortunate thing is that from 2011 to 2016, we only lined the exterior of the waistline uh, of the pipes you know, from, from the manor out to towards the street. We didn't line any of the interior pipes. Uh, that's unfortunate because the technology was available. But for some reason, the mm -hmm. decision was made not to do that. Um, now, beginning 2017, with the current program, we're doing both. Uh, so you're going to see a marked difference in the savings coming up, up uh, for the balance of this program. Um, it, with the current funding that you have allocated of one and a half million dollars, we've estimated that we can epoxy line uh, the rest of the uh, residential facilities in the mutual within a two-year um, horizon. So it's, I believe that that's a very reasonable horizon. Uh, I believe that the funding is adequate. Again, it's a policy decision as to whether the board wants to increase that funding and accelerate that program. Uh, this is a very interesting graph that I threw in here because it, it really shows the cost uh, that the mutual is incurring uh, to repair all this uh, stoppages that occur we plotted two things here. One is the stoppages from 2011 to 2017 that have occurred due to the main line stoppage. In other words, the external lines. Uh, and that's shown in blue. The other one are the stoppages that have occurred due to the internal lines, the problems with the internal lines. I think that what's dramatic here is that uh, the, the cost, and again, these are uh, labor uh, plumbing hours, which is it's really the, the cost for the repair of these uh, backups. It's all really labored. Uh, so if you look at the costs associated with the repair of the stoppages uh, due to mainland stoppage, that has decreased considerably. In fact, uh, dramatically uh, from uh, 1,400 hour, uh, from 1,200 hours to down to 648 hours over the years. Uh, however, the internal lines has shown that there's been an increase in cost. And that is very easily explained. Since 2011, we've been addressing external lines. And we've left the internal lines intact. We haven't touched them. So uh, blockages continue to occur because these lines need, need the attention that we're giving the external lines. So what will happen, since we switched to doing both lines, from here forward, you're going to see the the trend a reverse on the number of uh, labor hours that we're using to address the, back, uh, the backups uh, due to internal lines. Uh, you're beginning to see a, 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 a trend beginning already in 2017. Uh, and in the, in the coming year or two, you're going to see that line actually uh, slope down the other way. Uh, so what's coming up? Uh, we were essentially looking at about $41 million this year of uh, uh, funding for projects and programs for the community. Uh, that's uh, uh, close to uh, double the amount that was uh, uh, appropriated last year. In the case of United, uh, we've gone from, uh, we've gone through from 11 something to about 18, 18 million. Uh, so there's a considerable increase there. So quite a bit of challenge ahead to get all these programs done for you and projects. Uh, our commitment to the board is to complete all these projects and programs the year that you budget them. Uh, unless it's, you have a multi-year uh, project or program, uh, if you budget it in 2018, our commitment to you is to complete it in 2018. So you know, we're looking for your support to be able to do that for you. And then uh, last uh, item that I wanted to uh, briefly talk about is the handyman program. I think most of you are familiar with 
what's being proposed uh, is to put a handyman program in place. This will be modeled after um, Walnut Creek program, which is uh, pretty successful. We've had conversations about this already uh, in September. In fact, we had a conference call with uh, staff from Walnut Creek to ask questions about their program, uh, to learn about their, their experience there. Um, and since then, we've moved forward. We've described the number of services that could be provided. I'm not going to go through each one of them, but there's a large number of services that will be provided through this. Um, uh, and then there will be personal services as well, such as uh, removal and installation of table leaves, turning mattresses, uh, moving lightweight furniture. So there's a number of things that we'll be able to do through this program. Uh, we've created a number of uh, frequently asked questions that will be uh, used with the program. Again, this is at the uh, conceptual stage right now. As I said, we're modeling after Walnut Creek. Uh, we've also uh, created a, uh, the terms and conditions for the program that the residents will have to adhere to. We're going to run this by uh, legal to be able to make, make sure that this is uh, all okay. And uh, so, again, where are we at with this program? We took it, uh, we, we made a presentation to uh, third, the third MNC. Uh, we're proposing to bring it to United MNC for a presentation on the 27th. And then subsequently, we'll take it to GRF MNC in January 25th. Uh, we hope to uh, have an old boards meeting where you can all weigh in on the details and then launch the program. We have staffing already that's been allocated through the 2018 budget. Uh, and we're looking for an appropriation from GRF to be able to purchase the vehicles with the tools and uh, everything that's necessary to launch the program. So, so with that, uh, I. Apologize for you know the long presentation. Uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of where we're at, what we've done for you uh, this year. You know the accomplishments, quite a bit of work, uh, and uh, again, I'd be happy to. Uh, uh, I'd like to make one comment sure. uh, before we we start with other questions. <clears throat> one of the things that we've seen, and you've seen some of it in this uh, presentation, is. Uh, we allocate money, and then it's months before something's done. Uh, they've made a commitment in 2018 to try to do it within the year that it's budgeted, and steps have already been taken, which I am very, very pleased with, to let the contracts, because that's been the big thing. We allocate the money, and then it takes three or four months to get the contract out, and so the project doesn't start until April or May or whatever. Uh, Ernesto and his staff have done a great job of working uh, with our contracts division to get those contracts ready to go next month. And so I don't think we're going to be able, we're going to be seeing that in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. We will be making an effort to do that. In fact, uh, I'll be bringing uh, before you for signature the waste lining uh, contract. Mm -hmm. uh, what we like to do with that, that was done for uh, one year, and there's absolutely no reason why to do why we should do that for one year. It should really be a three-year contract with a couple of years options to, uh, to extend. So we're going to be redoing that contract, bringing it to you so that it's seamless, so we don't have to go through the procedure of having to redo this contract. This contractor was already vetted. Uh, they're competitive. In fact, uh, we've reached out to them and we negotiated a lower cost unit price to do the work, which is, is very unusual in the industry. Uh, so we're going to be, you're going to be seeing that. We've also in, uh, submitted all purchase requisitions to our purchasing department to make sure that all of the annual programs are ready to go in, in January. So we're really making an effort to make sure that everything gets started early so we can wrap everything <coughs> up uh, within the fiscal year for you. Thank you. Addressing that lag is a big deal. Yes, Andre. Uh, I really like the handyman program, and uh, some of my uh, friends, they are primarily females, that they like this program, they're single ladies. Uh, however, one question I have is uh, a lot of these services in the United environment are really performed by uh, the mutuals, 
they really don't need to have uh, handyman servers because uh, the mutual is responsible for these programs. So do you see any chance that uh, uh, the charge might be different rate, uh, United may be less, and uh, third, because they need to take care of all these issues, uh, so their ch charge uh, fee will be higher? Is it possible? Uh, Madam President, if I may, uh, the charges will be 200 across the board. And where this, is, where this program is useful to uh, United residents is where you've done manual operations, which uh, the mutual will not take care of. You know, they're essentially, uh, they're services that are chargeable services. So, or you can have somebody else, a vendor from the outside come in and do for you. So we will be able to provide that at the very, very low cost of $200 per year. Um, so that's where it will be useful to uh, United residents. And we have a lot of alterations. That's correct. Any other questions, Raisa? <clears throat> I have two questions. One is regarding this West Line. You say internal and external. Do you mean internal to the unit and external? That is correct, internal to the unit. So the waste lines that are actually under the slabs, in the walls, all the venting that goes up through the roof, all of that gets addressed. Oh, okay. The second one is uh, pushmatic. Uh, have you considered 80% rule by National Electric Code that is uh, now uh, part of the California Code? Relative to this program, no. This program was put in place to replace the panels uh, because the push are essentially obsolete and they're not supported by the manufacturer. So the idea was to replace them in kind, uh, which, you know, I don't necessarily agree with. This was done before I got here. However, uh, the panels that we're putting in are, as I mentioned, rated at 150 amps. Yeah, but <clears throat> I thought that everything we do now has to conform with the present rule. Is that correct? Everything has to be per code, and this program is vetted through the city, so we do have all the permitting in place, and uh, the contractor that's doing the installations for us, it's uh, uh, fully certified to do the work as well. All right, <clears throat> Cash. Uh, okay, thank you. Ernesto, great presentation, but I have a couple of minor questions. On page seven of the solar program, the United, you gave a number of 12 years for the ROI. Do we have the same number for the third? What the ROI was, is? Uh, you know, I don't have that number handy, but uh, we can easily look into uh, the documents that have been generated. That's all in there. Uh, essentially what we did uh, is we took the benefits that will be derived from the United program in terms of dollars, and we divided it by the entire cost. Came up with about 12, 12 years. Uh, a direct letter may, you know, may weigh in as to whether that's, it's a ballpark figure, uh, and it depends on generation, whether they're able to meet that generation uh, capacity that they set out to this. It's a performance contract, so it's really an uh, GCI to be able to, to, to meet the, 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 the generation that they've uh, uh, the, indicated. The of my question was, we United has pay is, uh, project cost was three million seven ninety, while the third was two point five, and they are making uh, almost fifty kilowatt more electricity. Yeah, the the reason for that, if I may, is that uh, the program in United, uh, including the energy upgrades to your laundry rooms, so there was a, a considerable amount of the cost that went in there as well. Um, so, you know, as I mentioned, we changed out uh, water heaters as well as uh, panels in your laundry rooms. So that was a, a segment of the total cost uh, for this program. The, the, yeah. They're not apples to apples. We yeah. have different systems, different ways of We're financing it, whatever. Is. So it's really hard to make a comparison. Yeah. One more question. <clears throat> On uh, page 16, the waistline program, you are saying United Mutual allocated 1.5 million, and the third was 750, half of that. Is it because of the age? 
of the buildings? That's exactly why. That's exactly why. In fact, we're finding that uh, that uh, third could possibly complete their buildings in an 11-year 11 11-year 11 horizon. And a lot of that is predicated on the fact that they have a lot more ABS and plastic pipes in their buildings, uh, which are less susceptible to the corrosion that we see in our cast irons and the uh, BCP pipes. Thank you. <coughs> Manuel, do you had a question? No, I just uh, follow up on that. Uh, <coughs> solar panels, was, was it about $1.2 million for the replacement of the uh, laundry uh, equipment or something like that? That's about the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was, no, it wasn't. Uh, no. I, right. I'll defer to Director Leonard. Right. Director Leonard. These questions continue to come up. So if everyone would bear with me for a second and try to sink in on this. Um, the contract with JCI included the solar program, the PV. It included the pushmatic panel replacements in 82 of our laundries. It included the replacement of 350 hot water heaters with 175 smaller hot water heaters. If you back out the hot water heaters and the electrical panels I'm trying to remember the number off of the top of my head, but you could probably call it at about 400,000. So if you back that out of the total, that would be a fair approximation. The other differential between the cost of the United Solar PV installation versus third was that one, we have a performance contract with JCI, Johnson Controls, and third does not have a performance contract with Solar Optimum. Additionally, the work that was done for us by Johnson Controls had no additional charges whatsoever. There were no add-ons add later. What did, what did they call that? Change orders. Change orders, thank you. It's, it's late. We had no change orders. Had anything uh, arisen during the installation of the projects, Johnson Controls was obligated to pay any difference. They could not come back to us for additional funds. That was not true in the third installation. And um, their contractor did run into exceptions. Yeah, significant which, change orders. Significant change orders, which not only cost more money, but also delayed the completion of the project, which also eradicated some of the initial savings they were going that to see. That is correct. To the end of this, um, as far as the ROI and the payback, um, it was initially computed by Johnson Controls, and that's why we went with the performance contract. And until we get through the first year of total operation, we won't have any substantial numbers as to the generation. However, I think uh, one clarification I would make to uh, what Ernesto had mentioned is that the size of our solar PV system is approximately 800 kilowatts. It will generate approximately 50% more. The 800 kilowatt designation is for the system size. The generation is, depending on your location within the United States and your longitude and your latitude and how much sun and cloud cover you get, um, is an additional multiple of that. So to the best of my recollection, I believe our solar PV system is to generate something like 1.34 megawatt hours from the 800. 
So we'll see, but it will take the entire year. We did lose some of our generation initially in uh, April and May due to the SCE issues with their wiring. Um, so Johnson Controls uh, offered to restart the performance contract on July 1st of this year so that we didn't have to take that you know, back into consideration for what we didn't generate in those, and approximately that month period over the eight systems. So we'll have a pretty good handle by next May as to what our annual generation is. And uh, st um, staff will be in communication with Johnson Control on an ongoing basis. Right, and we do have a, a, a company already that's performing the operations and maintenance of the system for us. So they're monitoring that the system is up and running and uh, addressing all the alarms that come up relative to communications between the inverters. Uh, so we're hopefully on our way to be able to produce they also um, more do than, yeah. uh, act as a, a third party verification that's correct for our contract with Johnson controls right thank you yes Andre <clears throat> uh, looking at the page 15 waste uh, line remediation program Looking at two pictures, this is a really significant differences in there. So, uh, uh, is this the pro? This is the picture we can share with our residents and tell them say this is how much improvement we made uh, uh, for the uh, waste pipelines. Is this a norm or is it just an exception? And also, when you say 50 years life of these uh, uh, epoxy linens, uh, is that a warranty or just uh, estimates? No, it's just estimation based on. Uh uh, systems that have already been been installed and uh, laboratory testing. Uh, the PVC is essentially, you end up with a glass lining mm -hmm. on a pipe. So it's very, very unlikely that that will fail over time. Uh, I, in fact, uh, the manufacturer actually estimates in, a, you know, in excess of 50 years. Uh, what you may end up uh, with in, the, in 50 years, say, is uh, deposits around the pipe that mm -hmm. need to be cleaned up. That would look something similar to the picture that I showed you there, which would require for us to go in there, clean the pipe, rotor root it again. But the liner itself, it's, you know, uh, the epoxy lining essentially, uh, it solidifies as glass. So it, it lasts for a long, long time. So is this the norm, the, the picture comparison? This is pretty typical of okay, what we great. find when we uh, address wow. our backups. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Ernesto. We appreciate your report this morning. It's always, I think, illuminating for our residents who watch this on television to see what is being done. So thank you. Very good. You're very welcome. Thank you, Ernesto. Uh, <clears throat> the, did you have anything else, either Steve or Don, from? No, a couple of minor at, uh, items, and Ernesto mentioned them. So that would be the end of the report. Do you have anything, Steve, you wanted to add? Right, they will meet on December 27th of this uh, yes. year uh, here in the boardroom if anybody is interested in attending. <clears throat> Resident Advisory Committee, Don, I know you were absent. Uh, I was absent uh, in that first meeting. I, you took my place one day. Uh, I know our first meeting or our second meeting will be tomorrow. Right, usually it's on Thursday following mm -hmm. the board meeting, but because of the Christmas calendar and all of the things we had to do, uh, it is tomorrow afternoon at three o'clock. And so uh, we keep emphasizing the resident advisory committee is for all of our residents. If you have something you wanna talk about, please come. We have the ears. We're willing to listen to help in any way that we can, but this, is for the benefit of the, the various residents. So I might re <clears throat> mention that all of our meetings this year will be on a Wednesday. Okay, we're going to move it to a Wednesday so it doesn't mm -hmm. conflict with some of the other meetings. Yes. In the interest of time on <clears throat> item 16, I would just like to ask uh, our representatives from any of those GRF committees if there's anything special that you would like to talk about. Don? Yeah, I'd like to mention, it came up earlier, uh, in fact, I think Brad mentioned it, about the pickleball thing. This board uh, 
Now, if you recall, voted for to have all boards meeting to discuss this, and then United, uh, I mean, third Ballot came along with this, and uh, so in the meantime, GRF felt the pressure and they recalled the uh, contract. And now we're going to have all boards meeting again in January and to talk over the, the whole program of pickleball. We don't know if it'll be in the same place or change it upon, but we'll have a, something will come up at that meeting. Right now the pickleball has been, is on hold. Table, yeah. And <coughs> I, let me mention the, the uh, Clubhouse 2 Annex. The annex is going to be left alone at this time. However, the area where the old uh, shuffleboard was, that's been removed. We are replacing that whole area with kind of an outside picnic uh, meeting area, not picnic, mm -hmm. meeting area. It's uh, labeled a passive park, but that's still under discussion. It's right. under discussion. It's that's under still under discussion. discussion. Right. And uh, so we'll have more information on that next month. And that's all I need to report. Steve, you had something. Um, I did want to touch on a couple of things uh, from the GRF Maintenance and Construction Committee uh, meeting because I felt it was important to demonstrate to the community. Um, first of all, given the new GRF elections, there is a new chair of the GRF MNC Committee, and that is uh, Jim Matson former president of third, and there are several new committee members as well. Um, we had an 11 page project log that was presented to us. And um, most importantly, I made some notations here that um, there were 28 projects in GRF that were completed in 2017. Uh, as of our November meeting. And there were 14 additional projects slated to be continued to be completed by year end. So that would be 42 projects completed by GRF MNC within the year, which is a remarkable piece of work. And I think uh, kudos have to go out to Ernesto and all of the staff that made that possible. Um, the number one items that are still outstanding on GRF are First and foremost, in my mind, this community center with the HVAC replacements and the uh, energy management system controls. That's been on hold for a while, but that is a priority. The other two priority uh, are the uh, completion of the lawn bowling update, which is moving forward. And as Don mentioned, the pickleball, but that's been completely rescinded and back under for full consideration by GRF as a result of our going forward. And that's uh, all I have. I might add, just in case any of our residents don't know, <clears throat> we now own this building. We, we paid off the building uh, in October, and so it is our building, and we are responsible for it. That's all some of the things that we're looking at and everything, so we are no longer... Um, making, making payments. Yes, it's it's our building now. Uh, any of the other? Yes, cash. Uh, one quick uh, information on mobility and vehicle committee. Uh, the demand response is extended to Saturday between 8 and 10:30 p.m. If you call Friday before noon to plan your trip, and this might be a good information for residents. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Anybody else? Janie. Yes. Oh, hold on, Janie first. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Community activities report. All I, real quickly, is a motion was passed to suspend the GRF pool and fitness room guest fee for 2018 summer period. So there will be no fees collected for guests for the pool and the fitness center in the summer. And the next meeting uh, will be January the 11th at 2 p.m. in the Community Center boardroom here. Okay, Maggie. Okay, Thrive is an interesting program that you can find on TV6. It has little vignettes of people throughout the village 
<clears throat> conversing about their activities or just conversing about how they found friends in the village. Um, analog TV is on the way out. Resident, if you have only an old TV, prepare yourself for making an investment or getting your relatives to give you a new TV because analog takes up so much space that we can, we can get better broadband use out of regular TV, new TV. So, so don't get overly fond of your old TV. Just sayonara, old friend. It's been a good long time, but consider a replacement. The sooner the better. I mean, this is the Christmas season. <laughs> okay, thank you, that's it. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else? All right. Uh, <clears throat> 17 is future agenda items, and as we discussed in, in new business, putting on the agenda for our next meeting, um, we have the resolution with modifications to the financial qualifications, and we have the anti-discrimination policy. So we get to 18. Do we have any quick member comments? Start over here. Our director comments. <clears throat> Steve? Um... We're, we're having conversations between the communities, uh, the mutuals, about uh, conducting an SCE asset audit, uh, given the line cut that happened the other day up there and the loss of television and internet. I thought that that was a timely discussion. Uh, there was some conversation about hiring a joint outside consultant. Um, unfortunately, if we ask SCE, what do you own? What do you have? Where is it? And give us an asset list. They'll say, no, thank you. So we do have future requirements and needs for this community across all utility lines on the electric. So that is something that's being considered. Um, and I also wanted to wish everybody a happy National Dingling Day. <laughs> <laughs> you always come up with some wonderful national days. Raisa, did you have a comment? Yeah. <coughs> Regarding TVs. Uh, we were given some gadgets, uh, DTA, $45, to convert uh, analog to digital signal. Will that be uh, something that will continue to be used until uh, we uh, get a digital TV or not? Well, it will, but at some point, we're, we're going to be cutting off digital. Uh, I mean, we're going to be cutting off analog during mm. this year. So you might, you're building or you might, might last for a while, but, but all of a sudden one day you're going to find out you're without service because that won't work anymore. So, so be prepared before the end of the year, I think, as they're planning to. to Next year, the 18th. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, so get, so get, <coughs> get ready. It out. For now it's okay. Yeah. You could just keep, keep going with it, and then one day when it goes dark, that's the end of it. Uh, I just want to make another point. I have bought five different uh, digital TVs, including curved Samsung. And the resolutions are not as good as the analog. So I don't know when, uh, when they say, you know, they spend a lot of money to convert this uh, analog to digital for several years. And we've always had problem with this. I don't know uh, how come they're recommending us to go back to digital, <coughs> which is not as good. Well, because 10 years ago, the United States government said we don't do digi analog anymore. Right. And the major TV networks, et cetera, now only do digital. And we have one man in our broadband division who converts things from digital back to analog so that we can use it. Um, and the uh, resolution, et cetera, from the different day that we have nothing to do with, all we can do is present what we can buy and what's presented to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but <coughs> if 10 years ago they said analog is going to go out or it's not good, it's taken why did we spend long? all this money to convert analog to digital? Because we had a lot of people with analog TVs and we were trying to phase it out. Uh, 
Right. We're finally uh, do, getting to where we have to do that. Do you yes. think we'll be compensated for the forty-five dollar? No, that we're not they going to compensate anybody for their forty-five dollar mm -hmm. digital thing. So, Stephen. As far as the digital TV not being as good as analog, um, we do not broadcast in 4K resolution, ultra high def. If you buy an ultra high def TV, a 4K TV, and you plug it in the wall, you are not going to get 4K resolution, number one. Number two, I'll give you a, uh, an analogy. You can have the best stereo system in the world, top of the line receivers, amplifiers, preamplifiers, perfect specifications, low distortion, whatever it is. If you plug it into a four inch speaker, it's still going to sound like a Japanese transistor radio. So it's not necessarily the equipment, it's how you hook it up. The digital is an exceptional method of broadcast. Thank you for your information. But I have bought all the three uh, right. boxes they have. Thank well, you. Reza, and I think this is something that we can take offline with your individual with those, there. With those, I don't get the same results. <coughs> Gary, do you have any comments? I just wanted to say wasteland remediation is one of my top <laughs> <laughs> on the agenda. And uh, as well as it is for the third and GRF, and that's one of the, the three treasures are going to be getting together to figure out how we can maybe accelerate. boost this and accelerate it. Thank you. Maggie? OK, uh, Gary, this is a handshake. <laughs> USC plays Ohio State on the 18th. Well, this, we will not be shaking hands maybe after that. No, we won't. Janie? <laughs> 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 I went a degree with Gary, not on the football game. <laughs> I try to stay neutral on that. Um, I just wanted to comment on what a wonderful presentation that we had by our staff directors today. Yes. And I want to end it with happy holidays and uh, happy new year. Thank you. Don? I have nothing. All right. <clears throat> Andre? Uh, I, I really like the, begins with really enjoy the second review uh, uh, opportunity because that gives us some chance to talk to the residents and collect information and identify uh, their feedbacks and uh, help us out uh, providing the best solutions. That's for been the standard residents. procedure forever. Yes. yes, yes, I like it. And that's <laughs> what I'm saying. I like it. <laughs> and as far as uh, Gary mentioned, the wasteland remediation, yeah, that's very important, the wasteland remediations and all the uh, infrastructure issues, we need to pay attention to it and see how long it takes. We don't want to uh, wait until they collapse and then start having emergency issues. Thank you very much and have a happy holiday. Cash? Well, I want to wish everybody a happy holidays, uh, for sure. Also, what I'd like to say is whenever any comment is made by a director, you shouldn't be nitpicking like it, we saw it here. Please make sure that our time is also important. So don't speak just for the sake of speaking. Thanks. All right, uh, <clears throat> I will recess this meeting to our uh, closed session. And I, again, we all wish you happy holidays and I know it's been a long meeting, but I hope the reports that we got from all of the directors, which lengthened our meeting, were of use to you as the residents. So thank you.